five, four, three, two. Uh, there we go. All right. Yeah, yeah, we don't need any interference here. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Are we live? I think we're live, people! Ha 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 ha! Hey, everybody, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Master 88 here, along with a special guest of mine, Benny Boy. And we are going to be doing a Calculate Linux live installation in just a few minutes. But first, housekeeping. If you enjoy these live streams much, just as much as we do, then smash that like button, ring-a-ding that notification bell, and subscribe to, to my channel. Thank you. Um, It was supposed to be Chimera OS, but I ran into a series of technical difficulties getting the ISO to, to boot after installation, and unfortunately, I could never get the thing on work. I've tried VMware, Vert Manager, VirtualBox, GNOME Boxes. I tried all the main four that I know of. It wouldn't boot, so... Benny, Ben here gave me the idea to try Calculate Linux, and since I never did Calculate Linux, a live installation, I don't, if I did, it may have been a long time ago, but it's been a while, so I got a, um, a daily build of Calculate spun up in GNOME boxes, so I will be showing you all GNOME boxes in just a few minutes. Um, I do want to get get like maybe one or two announcements out of the way first. So here's um here's the first announcement that I want to get out of the way, folks. Um the the um the next Edo Pro Dual Night Plus open chat is going to be for March 30th at 4 p.m. Eastern Florida time. So mark that all in your calendars. That's going to be basically when that's gonna be. Um, and also coming soon is the next episode of my Linux History series, Linux History Shorties, which we're going to be covering Gentoo. I'll have you on as a special guest. Mm-hmm. It's basically your main OS. Mm hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah that is true yeah i mean i mean folks i've installed gen 2 like oh i'm on i've i've been about 10 as of this as of last year because i did do a gen 2 installation last year i mean it thankfully that one went okay because it was a live install back then Now, uh, yeah. Now, also, just letting you all know as well, um, the April live installation has been decided. Um, since we're doing uh, a Gen Two based distro this month, next month, what we're going to do, folks, and I've already gone through Distro Watch. Uh, we're going to pretty much go through a debian based distribution that i've never 
tested before, we're going to be doing a live install of Antex or Anti X. It's basic. It's basically for those who don't know, and I'll give you a brief summary. Antix is a Debian-based distribution that is that does not have System D in it. I do not know what type of run it system it runs, but it it but it but it, that the cool thing about it, folks, it has a beautiful and I mean beautiful. Um, I think it either uses JW Joe's Window Manager or it uses IceWM. Okay, so it uses Fluxbox, IceWM, and JWM. Next month, folks, um, the live install for Ant Antix is going to be the IceWM version. So it'll be basically my first crack at the Ice Window Manager in a good number of years. So keep a lookout for that. Yeah. Um, the Linux history store shorties Gen 2. I have not made a date for that yet, but I will be making the announcement of a date for it in a future channel update. So everybody stay tuned for that. All right, so what I'm going to do, folks, as with all my live installs, I'm going to give this a two-minute warning, and then we are going to get started. I have GNOME boxes and Calculate all ready to go. Just a cool, just a reminder, folks, this is a nightly build, nightly slash daily build of Calculate. It was just released literally two days ago. Okay, let me just check our frame rate here. Okay, good. Frame rate is still zero frames per second. CPU is only 10%. That is pretty good for 16 gigs of RAM. I love this MacBook. And and just letting you know, folks, um, I am on the mid-2012 MacBook Pro again. This is where most of my live streams happen because... The computer on the other side of my room, my main YouTube production machine, it only has 6 gigs of RAM and an AMD processor in it. It does not have enough specs to run. I do eventually, maybe mid, late this year, maybe 20, most likely in 2025, that machine is going to get replaced with a new, more, better system. And it's either I aim for one of two, comp uh, one of two systems, either a Dell system or an HP system, or a Lenovo system, because, folks, I've been looking at Lenovo Think Center desktops late uh, uh, over the past few months here, now, and Think Centers are really interesting. They're nice and small machines. They don't take too much space. So, in a lot of in a lot of of certified uh, computer people work on those. So, I may aim for a Think Center at some point. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you can just ask Total OS today. I mean, he, he swears on ThinkPads just like we do. I mean, ThinkPads have been around for decades upon decades. He, Uh -huh. Mhm. Mm yep. 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 I mean, here's the thing with most computers, if your warranty expires, that does not mean you have to get rid of the thing. I mean, my, my main YouTube production machine, its warranty has been out for a good number of years now, and it's still usable. So if you have old, if, if you have, if it. If you have like old hardware lying around, like old laptops, they're still usable because once you put a good Linux distro like what I'm using, Mint, it just works. And 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 folks, I know what you're thinking, Ricky. What happened to Arco Linux? 
I'll tell you what happened to Arco Linux. Arco Linux was acting so stupid yesterday, folks. I mean, um, I was in the process, you know, of, te of uh, getting uh, Chimera OS running. Well, not Chimera. I was basically in the process, basically, of doing some virtual machine testing yesterday. And VirtualBox and GNOME boxes was acting really stupid. Even VMware was acting stupid. Something wasn't right. And I don't know what was going on. I pretty much did what I could. And I decided, you know what? If Arco Linux is going to give me virtual machine trouble for no reason, I'm just going to go to a more stable operating system. And lo and behold, I land right back on Linux Mint Mate, which is by far stable. It works. I'm, I've tested um, VMware. Gnome boxes on here, just those two for now, and um, I'm not having any problems. I also have Burt Manager on here too, and that's working fine. So, so I don't know what's going on with Arco Linux. I may revisit it at some point, but it, but only in a virtual machine. I, when it comes to getting my daily work done, folks, I need stable OSs that is not going to brick or cause me trouble, and that's why I have always stuck by Mint and Debian, Mint and Debian mainly. So that's pretty much where we're at, folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I mean, I mean, for, I mean, I mean, for example, I mean, it, it's basically with you being with Gen 2 and I using either Debian slash Ubuntu based systems like normal straight Debian, it works great. Linux Mint works great. I've even dabbled with Zorn OS here and there, which by the way, folks, the latest version of Zorn OS 17 dropped not long ago. So if you want to try it out, feel free to. Well, and plus it's got a very very friendly GNOME desktop layout. I, I have I hate to say it, but it has the most friendly GNOME experience out of anybody. So yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the... Uh Yep, let's get going here. I got GNOME boxes up, calculates right here. So for those who have never seen Calculate before, it has a wonderful XFC desktop uh, desktop layout. I mean, you got your little power button right there, which I will not turn the thing off. Thank you. You also got your menu laid out. I mean, you got things like LibreOffice, you got GIMP, you got the usual suspects are in here. I mean, it's a lot a lot of the software that most distributions come with. Now, some people have different packages than others. So just keep that in mind. But there but as I'm scrolling through the menu here, everything you have here, folks, is basically what Calculate comes with. So what we're gonna do, folks, is we're going to essentially um basically press our little install button here. So we'll get the installer to come up. Now the installer is kind of slow folks, so bear with it. Okay. Exactly. Okay, so what we're going to do...
Okay, so what we're going to do, folks, is we're just going to go down these options, English for the keyboard, and for our hard, hard clock type, we're going to go UTC. So now we're going to click the next button. So what you see right here, folks, is it's going to just give you some more information. You can just click next. That's all you got to do. Okay, so you so since this is a VM, you can just erase, do all that. It's going to be in a grid partition table, GPT, which is fine by me. I don't think it really matters, to be honest. So what we're going to do is just click next. Oh, there's not enough space on the die. You need for you. You need to auto perform. And auto perform needs 41. Well, you know what we're gonna do. Click that. There we go. Okay, then it looks like we're having a bit of trouble. Okay. All right, folks. So sometimes you know when it comes to these VMs that I haven't reviewed in a while. If you basically essentially have to make some adjustments. So what we're gonna do to do that I gotta see so how much does it need? Forty one? Okay, so what we're gonna do folks is I'm gonna fix that real quick. So it's a little blunder, don't worry. This happens. So what we gotta do folks is we gotta shut down the VM. And I mean, shut it all the way down. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is in GNOME boxes, we're going to go to preferences. So there, here's our storage limit right here. So what we have to do, folks, is we have to change this to a five. There we go. 50 gigabytes. That should give calculate plenty enough. So and now what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to go back into the machine. Okay, so you see when you come in here, you got English and you press this. Free. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the live chat on a different device. This way I can watch it because with how my window is right now, I won't be able to see it. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put my phone on, my Wi-Fi phone on vibrate. There we go. And what we're going to do is go to my YouTube channel, completely go to the YouTube channel. There we go. And what we're going to do is... There we go. Better. I was just making sure that the audio was working, folks. Don't worry. Everything is fine. Okay, let me just check. How's our frames? Oh, good. No frame drop. Nice. Let me just check. Let me just check my audio one more time from the Wi-Fi phone. So the audio is working good, very good. Don't worry, folks, this, this just takes a little bit. I mean, sometimes when you're dealing with virtual machines, it can take a little, it can take some time, you know, for, to get into the, to the live CD, so. No, 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 no.
Okay, so, okay, setting up the profile. Yes, that's what I'm. That's what I like to see. Check our frame rate here. Okay, good. Frame rate's good. Let me check the live chat. Live chat's fine. Good. Okay, everything is back up. Now we should be fine. But before we do anything else, I want to pull up a terminal real quick. So what we're going to do, folks, just to make sure this thing is proper, we're going to do a pseudo CF disk. And you see what we're working with? Yes. Give us a DOS partition table. There we go. Then we're going to make it bootable. And we're going to write it. Just taking a precaution, folks. That's all we're doing. Okay. Now we go here. All right. We got a DOS partition table. We're going to click the installer. We are good to go. And I think just to save time, I'm not going to go through as many options as I did before. So what we're going to do is just have these two be our main options. And we're gonna just, just going to click the America New York time zone. Mm-hmm. Okay, so after, so now we are in the users, so we're going to make our Ricky user here. We're going to grant him full access, as one should, and then we're just going to place all these groups in here. I mean, all of them. There we go. Then we're going to basically type in our password. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to basically type in our password that is not 1234. That's like, the, that would be too easy. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we don't need this guest one here. So we're going to get rid of that and we're going to click my user and we're going to make a root password as well because it's always good to have one of these. There we go. So now we're going to click next. Okay, now you do have an option, you know, to choose your audio system. You know, for the interest of time, we're going to go pipe wire. And as for the and as for the and as for the video driver, um obviously Intel. And we're and then we and then folks, we're just going to keep everything the way it is. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Okay. What I want to do, folks, is um, I just want to check my audio just to see if everything is okay. Base basically, I'm basically um calculate is basically you know like say 
say you want to get your uh, say you want to basically dip your toes into Gen 2 without actually going through the Gen 2 manual and building Gen 2 yourself this is a wonderful option if you want a Gen 2 all ready to go you don't need the fiddle of it you don't need to basically get the tools open the shed get the kitchen sink you don't need to mess with anything it's a it's a Gen 2 distro, all ready to go. All you do is install the packages you want and just use it as a daily driver. That's basically how Calculate works. Not really, no. And put on those bootstraps and just basically have to be able to figure things out. That's just how. Exactly. Right? But either way, so, um, you know, I've basically been one of those guys who, it's a great daily OS, but, you know, the thing is, you're, it's just sort of the fact that, you know, I don't know, I, yeah. I just, you know, there are Gentoo tutorials out there, but 95% of the time, they're not always up to date. So, you know, people can do them, but they're not necessarily yep. the best route to go. Because if you're going to run Gen 2, the best resource for you is the handbook. But I would not recommend installing Gen 2 until you've experienced something like this here. Calculate. Yeah. Linux right, Linux Gamer, welcome to the Calculate Linux Live install. And he told, he said, Welcome, our friend. Yep, he said hi to you too, Ben. Hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, also, just letting you all know, um, I just realized there was an audio te technicality with OBS. Um, I didn't have the speaker active, so I apologize if you all couldn't hear Ben. I'm hoping I fixed it. Oh, gosh. Were they not able to hear everything I yeah, I just realized it. I'm sorry. Oh, God, Ricky. Don't worry. I, f I think I fixed it. Let me mute my microphone so I can hear the yeah. output from a Wi-Fi phone just to clarify everything. Oh, geez, Jacob. We are so sorry. <laughs> we just said a whole bunch of crap about Gen 2. Nobody freaking hurt. God help us all. I feel like a dummy now. <laughs> Golly, man. All right. It's definitely fixed. I apologize, oh, people. <laughs> oh, God. They didn't hear a word this whole 
freaking however long we've been live. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, for basically oh, for those oh, who are coming in and didn't hear what and didn't basically hear what ben, me and Ben were talking about, essentially we were, we're talking we, about vanilla Gen two. We were basically mm -hmm. talking about the differences between vanilla Gen two and calculate and how calculate should be basically where if somebody wants to get their toes wet in Gen 2, you start with Calculate first, and if you want to basically go and build your build. own Gen 2 system, you can either basically go in one of two directions. You can either go OpenRC or System D. I would prefer right. System D. Right. Now, I will say this, folks. As a guy who installed Gen 2 more times than I can remember, count. I would say if you're going to go Gen 2 for the first time, at least the first couple times, don't go System D right away. The Gen 2 System D install is not as documented as the OpenRC edition is. Now, that being said, though, I would say if you want a uh, system d you can however um even though system d is more friendly with most hardware uh honestly open rc while it's old and it doesn't have as much uh hardware support anymore um i would still recommend getting the uh oh guru the digital what's up Sorry. Uh, again, we had a certain technical difficulty. No one could hear me. And basically, yeah. It, it was a technicality on my part, Guru Digital. I forgot to, to turn on my speaker in OBS Studio. I just corrected it. So now you all should hear Benny Boy just fine. Yes. And, uh, you know, if you don't recognize my channel name, because I changed it to reflect, you know, how my channel is from. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, by the way, if I may add this, Ben here does have a YouTube channel. It, it's just, you know, he's 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 busy, you know, with studies and everything. He he yeah. has it. He maybe once all that come calms down, maybe you'll get some content from him as well. Yeah. I will be back on my YouTube channel, guys. It's just right now, I'm uh, finishing up the last four chapters of schooling uh, of my current class in college. So, you know, hopefully within the next few days or so, and the uh, uh, the last four chapters and the final. However, one thirty in the morning, and that just epically screwed me over on that class so you know basically long story short if you're in college like me or gonna be in college don't take your final exams at that time of the morning because you'll be very tired most likely and you're just gonna run yourself in just want to point that out yeah um, but yeah like ricky said mm -hmm. once i get my uh, cert done for tech support. I should be back on YouTube a bit more regularly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and also um, another thing for those who are coming in just now, it was supposed to be a Chimera OS live install. I was I was planning yeah. to look at the Chimera OS gaming distribution, but I was oh, right. but I was testing the ISO um, this morning and. I tried GNOME boxes, VirtualBox, VMware, and Vert Manager, all four of them, and 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 unfortunately, the ISO wouldn't boot after a complete install. It basically would not work at all. So unfortunately, as much as I I was looking forward to it, it didn't work out like like that. So I had to basically scramble and figure out what I was going to review today. And that's when Ben here gave me the idea, why not look into Calculate Linux? Since 
I ahead. have not done a Calculate Linux live installation, I believe, on this channel as yet. So this is the first time I'm doing it on this channel. So, right. and it might not be the last time I review this distro on this channel. I mean, as long as yeah. it's still being developed, you will get more live installs with Calculate um, yeah. over, over time. But... Right. When, when it comes to the April live Linux install, um, next month oh. I will be doing a live install of AntiX or Antix. It is a Debian based distribution that does not have System D in it, and I'm going to be reviewing the ICE Window Manager version. So keep a lookout for that in April. Yeah. Okay. Looks like folks, the yeah, that's gonna be, uh it looks like the install is done, so we're going to hit the reboot button. Yeah, that was a good, I don't know, 15, 20 minute install. Okay, so what we're going to do is do that. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so, so we're running Linux kernel 6.6.12. Not too bad at all. Okay. Weird. It's hold on a second. What the heck? Darn freaking YouTube. Hmm. Okay, yeah, let's see. Point. Technology yeah. technology likes to 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 technology sometimes. Calculate is cool though. Yeah, War Thunder nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, calculate is really good. Um I did daily driver it once at one point many years ago. But back then, yeah. Calculate was known for being um buggy at times and it just wasn't for me. <laughs> But it has gotten a lot more stable over time, so I may reconsider at some point on one of my spare machines daily drivering calculate at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Now I mean now I did I'm... now I did hold, hold on just a minute, Pen. Um I okay. did do a live install of Redcore Linux months ago and unfortunately folks I would not recommend installing Redcore right now cuz when I did the live install I could hardly get the thing to function it was buggy as all get out Calculate in my opinion is better than Redcore at this time so if you're looking for a Gen 2 based distribution that works go Calculate I would attest to that, people. Yeah. And also, okay. Okay, so yeah. Yes, I know. Batteries discharging. That's fine. Actually, let me fix this. Huh? If it'll let me. There we go. Go to preferences. Come on. Okay, what we're going to do here is on power. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, never display. I by the way, as much as I, you know, want to keep my Windows 11 on top, my Asus, I'm just going to install either Calculator Gen 2 Vanilla uh, uh, in its place. Mm -hmm. And um, I. I mean, I mean, you have, a, I mean, you're, I mean, besides uh, Gen 2 and Calculate, I mean, there's also, you know, I am planning to build our secret system, you know, mm -hmm. alongside, uh, you know, Gen two or Calculate because honestly, mm -hmm. you know, building it from a, uh, oh Jacob, uh, I'll hit you up after the show, but, but uh, yeah, basically what we're gonna do going forward, Ricky, is you know, regardless of my build system, you know, like I told you the other night. Or last night, unfortunately, you know, building our new project is just not gonna 
be sustainable if I build it private USB. It's just not. No, no, no. Right. So that's why I'm going to build it from, um, you know, that's build it off a separate SSD on hmm. this. Uh, Hold on just a minute, folks. It seems like uh, we have a yeah. might have a problem here. Don't know. What is it? Uh, the little the little squiggly Maybe. here thing keeps flashing, and we haven't gotten into the login manager yet. So that's a bit strange. Okay, what we're gonna do, folks, is just to be on the safe side. We're gonna force the shutdown. Then what we're gonna do. I'm going to go to Preferences, Share Devices. We're going to eat the ISO out of there. And what we're going to do... Oh, that explains so much. Put that down to 2. There we go. I don't know why the CPU cores was even at 4 to begin with. I only have 2 cores in this thing. Uh, okay, that was weird. That was so weird. Okay, now... Okay, there we go. Okay, so now what we're doing, folks, is we're basically going to try this again. Okay. That's what I wanted to see. There we go. Okay. Now, maybe if I'm lucky, the login manager should appear this time. Who knows? Let's hope so, man. I, I can't say for certain. This is part of the trouble with Gen 2 base, is that, you know... So, enabling NumLock on... Yeah, PTN. now, here's the, here's the one thing about Calculate, folks. Sometimes it does take a little bit to log in. It... As far as I know on NVIDIA, it will uh, compile the driver on first boot. And basically, uh... okay, so right now it's setting the console font and stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, folks, the first boot of any Linux OS, especially Calculate, can be a little. It's just, you know, why Calculate, unlike most others, takes overly long? I don't know. It's just, I have never seen Calculate this long in my life. Yeah. But, oh, well, it is what it is. Yep, it is what it is. I mean, it's not the first time. It probably won't be the last time either. Obviously. Okay, this is taking a bit longer than usual. Hold on a minute. Okay, what we're going to do, folks, is force shut down again. I want to go to preferences. What's going on in here? So what I want to do is... Let's crank this to at least 5 gigs of RAM. There we go. Yeah, just make it a bit more powerful because it might be the fact that it doesn't like that. I don't. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let's uh, put it down to one CPU. This way the host has a CPU to work with too. Just, you know, get, you know, equal footing here. Yeah. Okay, so let's try it again. Okay, yeah. what we're going to do is go to Advanced Options. Okay, what we're going to do is pick this. There. Okay, let's see what happens this time. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm. 
Something is really up with this build of calculated gas. I mean, I don't know what, but I mean, I don't know what the heck the calculated devs are doing, Ricky, but this just doesn't look right. I mean, it got to the, the console fund, but we're not in a login manager for some reason. Right. See, this is why, in my honest to God opinion, we, we should have done CL calculate scratch because, in my opinion, the build would have been longer. Mm. It might have been less freaking. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying that might have been a little bit less difficult to get working. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm thinking out of the box here. Or out of my head. But uh, yes, we probably are working. This is not the first time we've had a Gen 2 based image go wrong. Hmm. Uh, by the way, War Thunder, I, I uh, don't know if you'd agree, but do you think that, you know, Ricky might have picked the wrong video driver? I mean, that's the only thing that I could have, I mean, this is virtual box, this is not in time. So, I mean, that's the only conclusion that I can probably come up to. <laughs> Manjaro. <laughs> oh, jeez. I can't tell you how many gosh darn frustrations, you know, me and Matthew Moore used to have Manjaro, man. I gotta tell you, <laughs> that distro, oof, that was, oh my lord. I will not, uh, the Intel one. And I'm like, oh my. See, I was trying, I would have told him, you know, to pick. I don't even know if there was a virtual box graphics drive installer, but you know, oh my word, this is this is worrying me, man. I mean, you know, this is why you don't just pick a graphics driver. Not a good idea. I mean, Ricky, when you get back, I think I have a solution. Yeah, we might have to do that. Just a minute. Oh, okay, okay, people. Okay, people. I'm back. Sorry yeah. about that. Had to take a phone call for a minute. That's fine, Ricky. But here's what I'm thinking, man. You might have picked the wrong video driver. Install. Well, uh, no, no. I don't think it's a video driver. I think I may have picked too new of an ISO. Let's go back to the calculate site. I'm gonna get the last stable version. Yeah. Okay, desktop. Then yeah, we're gonna pick... I don't know which version they're on now, Ricky, but if there's a new stable version, I think we might be better off going. Okay, now, there we go. Before you pick the XFC version, just to make things a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit less hectic and a little bit less uh, problem filled, why don't we try calculating? just that but you know i don't know i just i was thinking it might be a little bit less problem oh i i can see where you're coming I mean, from ben i can yeah yeah i it's just an idea i'm not saying we have to go that road yeah but... well i already got calculate linux 23 stable 
almost done. So we're gonna what I'm gonna do is swap yeah, the we'll ISO and see what happens. Wait, let me just see which version. Yeah, if you want to go the XFC route, I don't care. It was just an idea. Yeah. Now that we can also try on our own. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Scratch version, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Okay, I was also wrong. There's not a calculate scratch CLDX. Okay, that's a scientific edition. Excuse me. I think the scientific edition is for schools, education er areas. It, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. something about that. It's it, it's in the same boat, folks, as um Ed Ubuntu. You know that a uh, uh, Ubuntu flavor for schools and stuff. It's in the same realm as that one. Okay, so we got about 20, 26 seconds before Calculate Linux 23 Stable is downloaded. So once this thing is downloaded, we're going to give this a shot and see if it does better than the nightly build. Nightly builds are yeah. okay, folks. It's just, I think, nightly builds, in my they're personal opinion, for, they, they're night, not good for uh, daily usage. Like, Well, they're good for VM testing at a minimum. Yeah, but, you know, they're not smart for daily production use. No, no, no. When it comes no. to most distros, yeah. always go for the stable version. You won't, you won't. Right, especially if you're going to, for example, use it as a daily OS, make spin of it. Mm-hmm. Ah. That's just the way I look at it. Okay, it is so pretty I much done. I will say that you know I've tried using, I've tried using a, you know I've tried using calculate nightly to build an ISO from. Don't do it, because uh... folks, if you try using calculate nightly to build an OS, you're gonna be ripping your freaking hair out. There we go. Perfect. Uh, 132 hours of battery. Uh, Guru, where do you see that on his screen? Uh, What's going on? Guru Digital says he sees 172 hours. By the way, uh, um, that... your Mate setup, Ricky, looks pretty darn good. Yeah, I pretty much customized this myself. It looks very impressive i mean uh, okay well, what gonna do it's it it's looks almost damn near like an own too well that well the thing is i mean mate is the successor to gnome 2 that's why i pretty much went with this i will say <laughs> you know it's it's kind of pushing me to try it Okay, there we go. The, all right, calculate 23 is good. All right, let's actually try this again. I think this time it's going to work out. Um, uh, yeah. Guru Digital, 172, that's just a battery notification but, um, notifying me about my battery with my MacBook Pro. I, yeah, pretty I, 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 I pretty much have my battery plugged into the charger at all times because I treat this MacBook Pro as a desktop. Yeah, and I'm doing that with my HP ProBook until I get a new battery because, sadly, when I bought the darn thing, guys, it, uh, the seller basically misled me, saying that the battery still had some health, but no, it was, uh, its battery is pretty much effed, and I have to get a new battery for the thing, and my dad bought me one, so that will Well, well, I'm pretty sure this new battery will work out for you a lot better than the one you currently have. It will, Ricky, and that's why, you know, it, and it has 500 use cycles. So, that's going to be for a while. Okay, we got the uh, good old wallpaper up now. That's a good sign. Setting up user profile. Yes, that's fine.
Okay, so yeah, we should see a desktop any. There it is. That's what I want to see. Okay, so now let's click the installer. Yeah, that's right, War Thunder. Take two, but this yeah. time we yeah. should. But this time we should have a better time because this time. This is the stable version, not a nightly build. Hmm. Uh, well, it might have been the VM guru. I'm not sure. Um, if you're wondering what the um battery pop up was, Guru Digital, that was on my actual um Linux Mint taskbar. It was from the it was the battery notification system. I don't know how to turn off that notification. I really yeah. don't. Well, that we can look at together later. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's just a notification issue. I'm There's not going to... Nothing to worry about. No. Okay, so what we're going to do... Do that. Do that. Yeah, keep, keep it going. And by the way, we're using ButterFS. I don't yeah. typically get, you use a ButterFS system often. Yeah. Nor do I. Usually ext4 is usually all I go with, but B ButterFS, I've heard good things about it. It's not... A, I've tried it on Gentoo, for example. The good thing about it is, is it allows time shift. Well, yeah, true. And I personally enjoy it, but, you know... And honestly, if I do reinstall Gentoo, for example, I'm probably going to go with ButterFS encrypted, however. Mm -hmm. Because realistically, you know, I need those backups and I prefer privacy and security, so you know, I've started to realize that I want that, ButterFS is the way to go. And that's why I'm going to use that. What do you mostly. mean? That password can, it should contain at least eight symbols? Oh my heavens. Or Come on. Hold on a minute. <sighs> uh, okay, then go up here. Okay. There we go. Now it should... You've got to be kidding me. So yeah, I gotta part. use an eight-digit password. I'll be darn okay. I'll yep. I'll no. I'll play your game. I'll play your game. Yeah, and folks, I will tell you, <laughs> if I make, you know, a something based on this by some chance, so I'm not confirming I will by any means of the world. I am not gonna have this kind. Of, no gosh dang way. Because I, I don't see a point in a, of a password. Do you, Ricky? No, no, no. Right. Password should contain at least one uppercase letter. You've got to be oh. kidding me. This oh. is why, you know, systems like this can be a little obnoxious. Well, and plus, I mean... You should be able to have freedom to make whatever password you want. Yeah. Agree. I do not like password restrictions. That's the one thing that that's that's that and that's another reason, folks, why sometimes I have no choice but the distro hop is if I don't have freedom in constructing system passwords, that's a deal breaker. Yeah. I would agree with Ricky on that one. I mean, that would be a deal breaker for me, too. Okay, let's select Intel driver, because this VM is running on Intel hardware. Now, if you have an NVIDIA card, folks, it's right there. There's also AMD yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, but just letting you know, folks, speaking of NVIDIA, and I told Ben about this a couple days ago, um, yeah. Red Hat is in the process of making a free and open source NVIDIA graphics driver. 
Thank the Lord for that. It's going to be most likely replacing the Nuovo driver at some point in the near future. So once that's out to the masses, yeah. that's going to most likely help a lot of NVIDIA graphics cards. Of course. And I got to tell you, folks, I can't tell you how much, uh, I hate to say this, how much hell I have gone through with the freaking NVIDIA proprietary drivers. I mean, my, I am so, sorry to say this to NVIDIA, sick of how they treat Linux. I mean, my goodness. I mean, it's like NVIDIA, it's like Linux always says, NVIDIA, F you. <laughs> right, Ricky? Well, the thing is, I mean, NVIDIA should consider, um, Making an open, Linux. making an open source driver for the kernel. Like yeah, right now, I mean, they're right now their driver is proprietary. And I'm sorry, but for us Linux fanatics, come on. I mean, you remember as well as I do that that poor girl in Finland, mm -hmm. she wanted to run Linux on her computer, but she had the dreaded Optimus drivers, and you know the. That has always been a sore spot for Linux for I don't know how damn gone. And well, I mean I mean you, you see I mean you see like Intel and AMD, they made contributions to the kernel, they got really good um yeah. drivers, but um if Red Hat does do this folks and they're saying they are that's going to be a game changer if once this driver is released, because then this driver will basically succeed where the old one left off, the Nuovo driver, yeah. and this one should have a much wider range of hardware. Hopefully, cross your yeah. fingers on that. Yeah. Keep your fingers crossed, folks, because I got to tell you, NVIDIA has been a sore spot in the Linux, Linux community for a long time. And I say, hopefully my days of ranting will be long, long behind us very soon. Yeah. Well, uh, what I'm doing... I mean, what, what, you know, mm -hmm. I will say that my Asus, Asus Tough laptop alone has some good Arch documentation, but Gen 2? <laughs> no. I mean, you know, I pray for the day that you know, we get a better uh, Linux adoption, for example, with ASUS, because, you know, if you were to look up ASUS with Gen 2, I mean, whew, it's not a pretty sight. I mean, there are projects out there like ASUS Linux, but their kernel configuration with Gen 2, I don't know. When it was last updated, I might take a look, but hopefully uh, it won't be a cluster F much longer. All right. Well, anyway, but, any, you know, anyway, okay. folks, I need to step away for a minute. I got to get me some to drink, but I will be right back. Hold on a minute. Yeah, and I'll keep an eye on the show for... Something good. You... So, let me just check my, this would, maybe not. That's good to know. All right. This. We need. Right. Okay. All right. Oh, Can a guardian don't mind if I do. Oh, shit. your bumble. Hmm. An apprentice. Shit. Okay. 
Hope everybody's having a marvelous Sunday today. Happy uh, St. Pat's Day. And um, my words. Okay, let's check my other Discord while we're waiting on everything. And folks, updating the configuration. 40 gigs of RAM more thunder? Dang, dude. That's, uh, that's more RAM than I would ever need. I'd say. That's a bit of... Eh, my word. It's, mm. I have never seen a system with that much... Memory. Okay, like, people, I'm back. Yeah. Uh, doing all right. Uh, Just upgraded... Updated my daily driver laptop to 40 gigs of RAM to help with editing and 40 gigs. That's really good, man. Very good. Yeah. Oh, my word. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do while this thing finishes, I got distro watch open. So let's see what's going on here. Ah, DSL has a new release candidate. Um, if you don't know what that stands for, I haven't ran darn small Linux in my. Yeah, darn small. Yeah, I call it darn small Linux. I know that's not the that, that's not the actual name, but that's what name, I. That, we're trying, that, to, we're yeah. trying to keep it. We're trying to keep it. Up. Yeah, we're trying to keep it family friendly since there's a family friendly yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just sometimes accidentally let things slip. So. Yeah. Um Voyager 24.04 Alpha 2 is out. So if you want to give some feedback to the Voyager team, you can with that. Yeah, yeah. Regatta 22 24.02.0.2. Really good gaming distro from what I've heard. I'll have to check that out when I get a chance. Um yeah. Diabolic, one of the free software foundations. Um, proprietary free systems. Um, they're good for VM purposes, but those systems that they have <laughs> don't cater. I would agree with you there, Goo Digital. Proprietary, uh, solder RAM like Apple does sometimes. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, I oh, part. There you go. It's always awesome when when you upgrade it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, my MacBook Pro, it, 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 when I first got it back in 2019, it only had about 8 gigs of RAM in it. Just um, not long ago, I upgraded it to 16 gigs, and a new SSD is coming in a few days. It's an off-brand SSD, but it's going to work regardless. I got this thing for about $34, and it's got 500 gigabytes of space so i'll have a bit more space on the new one than i have on the old one now i'm not just gonna outright get rid of my old one. Oh no 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 what no. this old one's gonna be used for is a new and improved ben toy yeah because you'll have plenty of space for many Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I, I was on that. Well, right now, um, the drive that 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 my uh, that the Ventoy software inhabits is a one terabyte Western Digital Blue mechanical drive. Though I don't oh, yeah. know, though it's good. Though I don't know how long it's going to last. That's why I'm going to be giving it a nice upgrade with an SSD yeah. like the one that's in my Mac current. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was telling him, uh, Ward. Off-brand is never a bad thing. You just have to make sure yeah. the views are good. The mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't, whenever I buy an off brand that's not, you know, Samsung, mm-hmm. Candace, whatever, I always check the reviews to ensure I'm not getting, you know, scammed or whatever. Yep. Okay, folks, the installation is done. We're going to press our reboot button here and hope this time we get a I login. Really wish there's a little bit of delay between what I'm seeing and what you're seeing. But, you uh, know, as long as I still see it boot, it's fine. Uh, drop frames in OBS is zero. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's reboot this son of a gun and hope to God that the sucker works now. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there's my battery notification. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so there's the Plymouth screen. There we go. That's what I want to save. Yeah. Now, okay. Now, hopefully, we get past said Plymouth screen. This. Hopefully, I mean, all I want to see is a login manager. Enter my password. Get in there. That's the whole point yeah. here. Yeah, that's our main goal here. Ah! Whoa, that was not what I wanted to do in my game. All oh, right. that's good to hear, uh, Poor Thunder. I mean, sometimes, you know, the cheaper off-brand SSDs are actually a good way to go. Well, I mean, well, the thing is, I mean, think about it this way. I mean... I, I mean, like I was telling Ben not long ago, uh, me, me, he, he was giving me some ideas for SSDs not long ago, and he gave me the idea of, of like, Samsung. A Samsung Evo, folks, that I was looking at was around 40, 45 bucks, I think. That is a lot of money that I didn't really have 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 with me. So that's why no. basically going off brand to me was a better option. I managed to get a good SSD, 500 gigabytes for a really good price. So, yeah. Oh, uh, wrong. All right. So just give it a minute. Let it do its thing. It'll it'll eventually pop it'll up. Get there. It'll get there. It's just going to take us a little bit of time. Yeah. I mean, this is the stable version, so... I... Let's just let it boot. I'm confident that things will go through. Yeah. It should. But, no. Let's see. Oh, just letting you know, folks, um... In the near future, um, I do plan through a VM to do um um to do a video on um KDE Plasma six as well as GNOME forty six. There will be two two videos, one for each, coming soon on my channel. Yeah. Now. When I was on Argo Linux, folks, I did happen to test KD Plasma 6, and I tell you, folks, Plasma on X, Plasma 6 on X11 is great. I had hardly any issues. Um, yeah. The only problem I have with Plasma 6 currently is basically Wayland. I mean, I did, I, did I, I attempted to live in Wayland, and it just wasn't for me. It did not work out, so. No. I mean, I don't have anything against Wayland guys, but <clears throat> I'm sorry. You know, in my opinion, especially for us and video users, uh, I, I can't see a point. I mean, yes, Wayland has gotten a little better, but mm -hmm. in the long run, it's not prepared. Okay. Oh, geez. Come on.
Okay, well, well it looks okay. like light DM is not popping up. Well, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna press the FN key, control alt F. I mean, no offense, man, but this is where stuff doesn't always work. You can still hear me, Ben, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got a bit of a problem. There we go. Okay, finally, I'm out of the TTY. What the heck? Okay, Ricky, I'm going to be realistic. Mm -hmm. Given we're having this many problems. Should we, with... ju should we just go scratch? I th yes, but if I may say, I think going with VMware boxes, or even hell, virtual, might even be a smarter move. I mean, Honestly, I mean, what I could. I'm, I'm not saying GNOME boxes wouldn't work, but given we've had so much crap happen, with and we're already, I don't know, we're over like, an hour into this. Yeah. Let's do something a little bit less hectic than this. Okay. Well, I knew you were going to. I mean, I, I don't want to keep blowing through installs, getting dead screens. So let's just go with something. Well, the good news is I actually have something that's usable. Uh, right, right. Just delete that. Uh, <laughs> virtual box. I mean, yeah, just get that. Okay, let's make a new machine here. We're gonna call this. Oh, we've had two blown up installs, folks. But sometimes, you know, it's live, and you know, we yeah. can always, you know, yeah. just trial and error, folks, as it always is. With I mean, the thing is, cal with calc—I mean, with Calculate Linux, this sometimes happens, folks. So, of course, you know, sometimes things don't always go according to plan. Okay, there we go. Let's give this about oh, four gigs of RAM ought to do it. Yeah, why yeah, that... not? Okay, so. Now what we're going to do, folks, is I'm going to give this about 50 gigs of space. Yeah, I mean, it's a Gen 2 based system. You can never know what you're... Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically get rid of this ArchVM. That was just experimental. There we go. Right. Okay, so let's go into the virtual box settings. Do the usual stuff. 
Yeah. I do not. I am not doing UEFI. Uh uh. That would take too much time. And uh, we're not. On EFI, in my opinion, cluster F. Mm -hmm. As is, well, I mean, it's not that bad, but you know, we're not doing that today. Intel HD audio, bridged adapter. Okay, every setting is good now. There we go. All right, crank up the stable version again, but this time we're gonna try it with. Uh. Try it with what? Ah, uh, virtual box Not decided to air. What does it say? Ver M V. VMX and we have VMX. To run the mod probe v box DRV, I guess. I gotta do what? Pull up. Uh, oh, show the detail. Oh. Uh, we have to do a pseudo mod probe v. Okay, there's the there's the command if you want to read that. What the heck? Uh oh, the KVM kernel. Uh, whoa. Okay, there you go. Uh, yeah. Let me take a look at it. I mean, uh, freaking KVM mumbo jumbo. If you want to see, uh, let me take a look. KVM. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We might have to install KVM inside this sucker. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be right. I don't know. Huh. Oh, well, I mean, there, and well, the thing is, I do have another idea, though. I have another idea. Hold on. So, what we're going to do is, you know, I had this on standby. I wasn't planning to use this. Let's bring VMware. up VMware Player. Why not? Yeah. Okay, what we're going to do is get rid of this. There we go. We're going to make a new virtual machine. Now what we're going to do, click the ISO, calculate, Linux, other Linux 64 kernel bit, yes. Yeah. Keep it going. There we go. Mm -hmm. Always have VMware uh, available because you never know when you're going to need it. Mm. Okay, let's knock down the processor to one. Then what we're going to do is essentially put this thing up to 4 gigs of RAM, put this to bridged adapter, leave everything the way it is. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to power this thing on and see what happens. Oh. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, yeah. perfect. Nice. I'm, hold on, Ricky. I'm pretty sure that Calculate has VMware driver. Are you certain about that? I know I saw at one point I have it. Yeah. Uh, let me just check and see how our record our stuff is doing. Okay, no frame drop. We've been live for an hour and 27 minutes now. Well, that's what it's yeah, saying. That's I mean, what it's saying on yeah, there. You know, it's sometimes things, you know, don't go as you plan. No, I mean, it's, I, I mean, it, I mean, it's Linux. What do you expect? Exactly. I mean, sometimes you have to do things more than twice if you want them done. Right. Yeah. That dog of my sister's is being a real pain in the Right now. Okay, so we got a Plymouth screen up, so that's always good. Yeah. I don't know why VA, I don't know why VirtualBox is not wanting to run. It's something with, with Mint and how they implement K. Well, well, no, I don't. I think I know what's going on. I've had this. I I have a fury here. Um, 
what I'm thinking, Ben, is going on is um, how I installed VirtualBox initially. Because what I did was I installed VirtualBox as well as the extension package from the official Linux Mint repository. You'll have to get it from the dot .run file. Most likely, that's what I'm going to have to do. But that can be dealt with another time. Yeah, yeah. It looks like we got this thing going, so we we shouldn't yeah, have anything to worry about. Right. And there's currently three people watching us currently. That's good. Yeah, one of them being me. Oh, I know. All right. Yeah, we don't have the VMware drivers installed initially, but you know that's okay. That's fine. I yeah, I, I know it's all VM tools once we get into the system. But what or I want to might just grab them for us. I don't know. What I want to do is I want to do X render here. So we're gonna do an X render S. We're gonna do oh where is it? Trying to figure out. Oh, there it is. Twelve eighty by eight hundred. That's what I wanted. Twelve eighty yeah. by eight hundred. Yeah. That's more like it. Okay. So you see, folks, what I did here of X render. This allows you to essentially um, handle this without using the VMware tools. You'll have to scroll down here and there, but it's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so let's hit the install button, Ben, and see what happens. Yeah. So now, um, okay. yeah, if this version doesn't work, then I would suggest the Scratch Edition. That's just me. I mean, that's sort of like our last ditch effort. Okay, right. what I want to do here is do this. I want to go down just a hair. There we go. That's better. Yeah. So. Okay, so this is obviously a DOS partition. Yes. All right. Do that. Do that. Perfect. Yes. Okay, before I go any further, folks, I need to check my audio to see if audio is still peachy keen. So, hold on a minute. Yeah. I gotta mute myself for a minute. Alright, right here. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what I'm still making. Oh, press on this. Thunder. Huh. <laughs> Quite successful, that's nice. All righty. Okay, audio is still good. Audio is still wonderful. Okay, what we're going to do is make a new user like we did before. Okay, and then what we're going to do, folks, is we're just going to put all those groups over here. Yeah. And then I got to deal with this crap again. Let's just make sure that, you know, when now, Ricky, when you get to the, uh, whatchamacallit, the um, driver selector, let mm -hmm. me look at it before you make a choice, please. Okay, I'll let you look yeah, at the drivers. I want, I want to make sure that we pick the right graphics to avoid a green hat. And then we'd have to reinstall and all that mumbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to make a two. First. Okay, pipe wire, yes. All right, Ben, have a look at this. All right, what am I missing? Huh. I got the driver page pulled uh, up for okay. you. Okay, let me just wait for the stream to catch the hand. Okay. All right, uh, 
Let me see a few things. Uh, let's go with the Vesa driver. The weirdly, the Vesa the Vesa drivers, yes, because weirdly, they don't have um the VMware drivers in the selector here, so we can get those after installation. Yeah, what we're also going to do is do 1280 by 800, my normal resolution, and then for the Grub Terminal, we're just going to basically, you know, keep it GFX term. Yeah. Uh, 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 this is update, this is update I settings. I don't even need to do any of that. But I don't I, need to mess with that chunk. Yeah. And I believe next should, yep, here we go. Installation. Oh. All right, we'll see what happens with this. Okay, let me check my OBS here. Wonderful, yes. CPU is about 11 right now. That's not bad. As long as it doesn't go any higher, we're going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Unpacking system image to the target. Perfect. Uh, mm. <sighs> Hold on just a minute, folks. I will be right back. Hold on. Pardon me. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Tricks. Uh, this one. Um.
Okay, folks, I'm back. Welcome back, Ricky. Um, yeah, from when I installed this Gen 2, I'm using it. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm not going to go for this. Okay, 30% not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Yes. Recent. Okay, we're at 54% currently. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. All right. Let me check the live stream. Yeah. I mean, the live stream should be fine. Yeah, I was just checking the chat. To see. What I'm doing is I'm decreasing stuff on my end. You know, this way I can... Have a little bit more CPU power up in here. There we go. That'll do it. Yeah. Now, let's see. Okay. But yeah, Ricky, I decided against ButterFS, EFS, and stuff like that. I just decided that, you know, given ButterFS is kind of, you know, at least on vanilla Gen 2, I've had bad experiences with it and crap in the past. I'm just gonna, you know, given I want to use a separate home partition, things like that, I'm just gonna do that. That would be a good idea, Ben. Yeah. And plus, uh, okay. I'm just going to use G parted or CF disk or something. Drives. And given I'm using Odd Llama script built Gen 2, it's normally I wouldn't condone using a script with Gen 2, but I'm personally trying to save time because I don't feel like personally spending half a day to vanilla Gen. I just. No, and I've done it so many god darn. That's just not my line of. 
I mean, I mean, I'm pretty much the same way when it comes to Gen 2. I don't want to waste, you know, days on end waiting for waiting to be done with an installation. If I want Gen 2 immediately, boom, go grab Calculate, done. Yeah, CF disk. So I'm gonna make this to T. Oh wait, that's the wrong freaking. Okay, let's all the windows partitions off this stupid. Yeah. Write the changes and then um, for the and for the boot partition, it's gonna make it one gig. So actually, no. Yeah, one gig. I know because what? here's what? the thing. The reason I'm doing that is so that way I have enough for best boot. Actually, no. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do this boot separate drive. That way, nothing gets complex. Exactly. I completely agree with you on that. Then F. Okay, updating. Yeah, that's why each drive is going to have a 300 meg uh, EFI partition. So, yeah. Okay. I need to do another audio check, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on a moment. Yeah. And I'm going to give this thing a swap because I just like to play it. Let's write the drive. Here's a second partition. CF1GT. Uh, okay, audio is still yeah. nice. Very good, very good. Our stream is actually going better than I thought. Yeah, and Ricky, I tell you what, um, normally I would not, you know, put a separate swap for each OS, but I'm like, I like to play it safe than be smart. That's the way I'm doing it. Both SSD. That's not a bad idea um, when you think about it. Yeah, so now I'm going to go to device. I'm going to give the Intel Drive Gen 2. Or actually, no. I'm going to use the Samsung drive to. It has more space. Given LFS is going to be my build system, our, you know, OS, I am not going to, you know, put that as my daily OS. No effing way. You know. That's only, that's asking for trouble right there. Right, and given, you know, that's, yeah. All right, so, so that, and then, no, I don't know. Uh, right. okay, device. Uh, so like, okay, now swap amount. Let's see, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it all my RAM. Just to be safe. Root file system. Uh, EXT. Well, given I plan to use time shift RFS. Uh, let's see. Host name. We're Asus Tough Teen Gen 2. Now, specifically, Ben, like, how many distros in total support Jesus hardware? Jesus hardware. Uh, I'll be honest, dude. It, uh, if you're looking at, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, the Asus Linux community is pretty good, but, you know, I, I Okay, yeah. unmounting, Turn. targeted, and here we go! Time to reboot, folks! Yeah. Uh, we'll do... We'll stop. Okay, locales, you want to definitely... 
All right. So, I'm looking through the locales here, Ricky. And my word, this guy has so much script. Mm hmm. I'm just going to generate that when I true it to Gen 2. This large file. Oh. No. Bit mirror, we can leave. Leading edge, and uh, I'll just leave it. Yeah. I'm going to enable binary packages because not. And plus, I just want to get this installed done so we can binary package. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do app. I'm going to include sudo. I know, I know, War Thunder. I'm hoping it boots too. I'm keeping my fingers crossed too. Now, given the video driver we selected, I don't see why this would not load. That's mm -hmm. just my. Opinion. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've gone with the basic driver plenty of times using this. Yeah, only on a VM. If it was on unknown hardware, no, the graphics. That's when I would. Go. Mm-hmm. Now you fetch net. Let's just go. And Neo fetch. I'm just gonna do it. Now what I'm doing here, Ricky, is I'm gonna stand sync. I'm also going to add EIX. Oh, looks like... What? It's sitting there. It's booted, but it's not at a login. Okay, uh... God help me. Uh, why did this not load? Okay, I don't know what's up with calculate at this point, but... I I think we're at a dud here. You think we're you think we reached a dead end? Well, at worst case, <laughs> I I mean I can go grab scratch. It... Just do that. I mean this freaking XFC image is being a royal pain in the. I'm sorry. To yeah. Say, just... Man, yeah. We're wasting time here with this calculate XFC. Let's just build it from scratch. Uh, I don't know what. All right. Let's... I mean, honestly, that's what we should have started with. Wow. Mm. I mean, at this point, we're going to be doing the longest live install. All yeah. right. Okay. Than... Here it comes. 1.7 gigs. That's a lot smaller than the frickin'. Yeah. Well, War Thunder, your finger crossing, my friend, did not. There's them. There's... Yeah. All right, we'll leave it. Anything? No. Yes. Okay. okay, well, the post name. Make dashes in it. See if that on your sides. Acting. Why can I not type today? Ugh. I forgot to install in in this. All right, Scratch is downloaded. Okay. Yeah. 
Also, Ricky, for future reference, I would recommend we when we do these live installs together or not, I would recommend um, two things. Um, I would I know this is probably going to sound a little off the cuff, but turn the quality down to lowest as well as uh, maybe bring me on more often because people seem to like it. You know? I mean, I could use a co-host. Why not? Yeah, let's do that because I mean, <laughs> I think the I think these installs will go a lot. Anyway, so the... yeah, I don't know why we didn't start with PLS by. Honestly, right. I think that's a so, smarter approach. Okay, well, okay, what we're going to do here... No, I didn't want Virtual Box. Uh, let's yeah. go huh. with... Let's go Vert Manager. Yeah, let's try that by this time. All right. ISO, go Browse, Browse Local. Yeah. All right. Scratch. Yeah. Oh. And I'm getting a bottle of water open while this. Okay. I've had my a day. I only I'm starting to cut back on that go once a day. Okay, so RAM, we're gonna do four gigs, one CP. Yeah. I mean, we're running a basic terminal ISO. We don't need. You. And yeah, let's, make let's do and 40 two. gigs. There we go. 40 gigs for just a server that we're minimal. That's not the deal. Okay, let's see. Uh, and Ricky, I'm going to say right now. No, we're not going to need it. Maybe this time we go with open box. Uh, well, I, my... well, I mean, I mean, well, the one idea I had in mind we'll is. Get to the gooey part. Yeah, let's just wait till we get to the gooey part again. Yeah, because I mean, I'll say this much: given we're doing a basic, about as, uh, huh. I will say this is gonna be, this is gonna be as close as we get to like a basic Gentoo install. <laughs> Or another time on your channel. All right. Okay, so this go. looks all good to me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. We're not going to SSH into this. What's and plus, we're not doing UEFI, so I don't think. We'll... Okay, boot it up. Let's see what the heck we get. Startings. All right. Now make that VM window full screen. Don't mind if I do. There. All right. So I'm waiting for the screen. All right. So. Dubba, dubba, dubba. Okay. Well, we're not going to ask a station of it. So, no. All right. All right. So, uh, let's do a CL uh, install, I think. You said CL. I'm trying to remember how to install this. You're going to have to give me. Uh, Is it CL hyphen install? I believe it is. I. Uh. Yeah. What's the? Just, I don't even know what the root password even is. Don't it, you have to make one? Oh, so. You have to type one in. So I'll install. Let's wait name. for. Let's wait for it to catch up. This is why we should have set the quality to something. Yeah. Okay, so do uh, I so do I do a uh, so do oh, so do I no, do no, a no. 
No, 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 no. Wait, stop. Okay. Uh, let me just look at Adrian's video and figure this command. Okay. Because I know he has a tutorial. I was just answering a Galaxy's question. Okay, so um, let's look at and let's calculate. All right, um, calculate scratch server. Uh, okay, we got the com. He does. Oh, we have to specify the device. Okay, I'm just looking. Oops. Okay, Ricky, so you want to do CL hyphen space hyphen D and then your device. So, oh, wait, we have to do a CF disk first before we do that. I had a feeling you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to partition the drive or else. We're oh. All the darn thing. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Just a... All right. Yes. Yeah. Write it up, baby. There we go. Yeah. Pseudo is not in the system. I know. Now, what we're going to do is I got to. Do that. There we go. That. Yeah. So write the damn thing. You can still hear me, okay, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm just checking. You're good, man. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I know the video quality is a little bit delayed, man. There's nothing I could do about it. Blame YouTube for that. It is. Yeah. I. Let me just. I need our drive image. Sucker even still works. Now uh, I just I just want to look at something. Is the VMware tools even in in this thing? Oh wait, this is. This I, is a terminal. This, this is a terminal. I, I was I I had VMware on my mind from and I'm thinking and I'm thinking Ricky, this is Burt Manager. This is KVM you're working with. Well, Now, yeah. Okay, CPU is good right yeah. now. Very good. Yeah. Let me know when you got that command. Okay. Uh, did you do the MKFS command? Oh, I got to <laughs> Yes, you have to do that. AFS exists exits C four. Hold on, I gotta see do an L S B L K. What right. are we? Okay, we are a VDA. Okay. MKFS slash EXT four slash dev slash VDA one. Then we gotta mount the thing. Yeah. 
is it basically just mount slash dev slash VDA one? That's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but don't mount it right now because the those oh, freaking dog. Because I think CL install. Uh, okay. So CL dash install. CL dash. Oh wait, I need to make a password, don't I? It'll ask you to do that once you. Also, oh, so just put it in there then? Right. Okay. So, and we did make a swap, so we're using the device. So, uh, and then it's minus D install space hyphen B, and then your device, which is BD1 in this case. Oh, I need eight kiss symbols. Oh, okay, so it's just no, no, like. No, 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 no. You're doing it wrong again. You gotta specify the device. I gotta specify the device? Is that what I have to do? Yes. Minus D and then dev as the VDA1. Oh, and then, okay. Uh, and then minus U for users. I, I am confused right now. I know, I know. We'll just listen and you'll be fine. So. Cancel the uh, CL hyphen. Okay. You're jumping the gun. You need to slow it down. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Um, CL hyphen install. CL hyphen install. Space minus D. Minus D. And then your device name, in this case, VDA1. Dev. Slash VDA1. VDA1. Minus U. Space minus U. And then your username. Of course, and it's then, Ricky. And then just run it. Password for Ricky. Yes. Yeah. Repeat password. And then it should hopefully. Passwords do not match. Oh boy. And I'm gonna fast forward this video. Alright, so yeah. Um now after we reboot in if we do, we'll be fine. Uh anywhere in perimeter user, passwords should contain at least eight symbols. Oh. So and then just hit up and run the command again. See, this is what bugs me about. Gen 2 based systems nowadays. Okay, enter password for root. Okay, so maybe it's the same one I just made? I don't know. Looky there, Ben. All right. I'm waiting for it to uh, catch up on my end. Give it a sec. Yeah. So once this, yeah, run the process type, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can just keep the stuff for now. Yeah. So we just wait and. All right, then there. By the way, yeah, and there it goes. Yeah. We always play the waiting game. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is while this thing is its thing, I'm going to go get my dinner real quick.
too bad. Be right there, man. Looks like I have to go get my dinner too, guys. Back in a minute. Fuck, I'm Ow. Fuck. Okay, I'm back. You there, Ben? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. I'm back, Ricky. Uh... 
Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. It's ready to be rebooted. Okay, reboot the thing and let's see if this works this time. Hold up. By the way, um... Oh, it's running. This Gentoo install I'm doing is running. It's doing what? It's running kernel 6.6 .6 binary. Oh, a binary kernel? Yeah, yeah, most of yeah, but I also got the mirror select working in the script now. The guy must have fixed it some. Bye, George Ben. You're a genius. Look. <laughs> yeah, see, this is why terminal installs sometimes are. Better? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll be darned, Ricky. <laughs> this is why people should take my advice more. All right. I'm inside the thing. All right. Let's get... Uh, let's install some audio first. But before we do that... uh, Yeah, let's just get the audio. Thank you, War Thunder, for the encouragement. Buddy. All right, let's emerge something. Oh, wait, we don't have sudo. We have to get sudo. Oh. <laughs> Lar so, su to your root. Oh. Su. Did you make a root password? Yes, I did. Okay, then su to your root. Sudo su. Oh, God. Permission permission denied. Yeah. Hold on. Let's try it again. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Well you that's what happens when you fat think password. Oh dear. Yeah. Let's see, am I able to do that? Nope! Okay, well that didn't go. I do not have access to root for some unknown reason. Then you have to log out of your Ricky user and to that link. Yeah, let's do root. And then your password. <laughs> this is sad. I know this seems convoluted, but... There we go! Alright, we're in root. Okay, emerge pseudo, please. Now, it... Yeah. Alright, hopefully this doesn't take too long. Well, again, calculate is mostly binary. It's, there are some source programs, but not much. Yeah. Uh, dependency app admin sudo binary is required by sudo add argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's masked. Yes. Oh, I know what's going on. Dispatch hyphen conf. No, 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 not that, Ricky. No, you have to cl hyphen update because it might be using an old version of Portage and the mirrors and whatever. So basically we have to sync the thing and update it and all that. Okay. Let's keep... yeah. Hey, boys. Uh... Oh, it's... Yes, War Thunder, it's a success. I finally got past the daggum boot sequence. Now we just gotta 
give this thing some audio, give it pseudo. Throw in a login manager, which, in my opinion, I think it could go like DM. Just my two cents, because you know, yes, LX wants to fully merge, but oh, I mean, I, I well, like I had, well, only... well, I mean, I had another, another so, one in mind. What? Lie. I honestly think we should go light. This might do do sense. I mean, light DM's good. It's just the problem with light DM is. Well, again, we're using binary, so. I'm... But we. Hey. Okay, now... Yeah. Yeah. Let's do light DM actually. Because we both know it like the back of our freaking hand. I mean, there's SDDM, but that would—that's part of plasma. That would—I don't know how long that would take to, if it even does come. That's, but yeah. Now, how do we delete? Delete. Let's try that. Drop Drop Let's do that. Uh, can I do I'm dropping. I'm having to have my friend uh, Kathleen from uh, my SWG. Sorry, Ricky. I'm trying to give my friend Castle my uh, Star Wars Galaxy server account, mm -hmm. and I'm making a lot of typos when I type in her account name. Slow it I'm, down I'm a little bit. Yeah, I'm having to read the syntax. Uh, well, like I, well, like I just said, slow it down a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to make things any harder on her. Uh, yes. Oh, it's capital. 486 packages will be installed with these updates. That's fine. Yeah, well, they're again, they're all binaries, so it's... Mm -hmm. it, oh, and one of them is, uh, oh, one of them is QT Wayland, okay. Okay, now I have to assign a root password. I'm just going to make it some bloody easy. Right, so, so I can at least get into a... Right. Hold on a minute, Ben, I gotta take my plate out, okay? Yeah, I just got mine, so. Okay. Dot slash. Stop. Slash root. Temp. Stop. And root. Hey, I'm in my Gen 2 cheroot. Rick, yeah. Okay. That was like the fastest Gen 2. All right. And the name, what kind? Hmm. Let's see. Host. No. No. Okay. Uh. Okay, let's try something. 
Değişik. No. Uh. And Hmm. Post. Okay, people, I'm back. Okay, Ricky. Okay, how are we doing here, Mr. Burt Manager? Okay, it's still fetching, so that's good. You know. Let me just look at my li the live chat too. Um, you, I know you're watching. Someone else is still watching. Yeah, I think it's um, War Thunder that's still in. <laughs> okay. Uh. Uh, War Thunder said, "I'm still here, wa wa watching, watching through to at least uh, uh, see you get a GUI login." Yeah, that's what we're trying to do, buddy. Yeah. 
I mean, once we get through with this cascade of updates, the sooner we can get pseudo, the sooner we can get pipe wire, the sooner we can get a login screen, and the sooner we can get a window manager up in here. And I think just to save time, Ben, yeah. we're going to do Fluxbox. All right. Either that, or we do ICWM. I think Fluxbox would be the best route, personally. Yeah, we'll do Fluxbox then. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it was literally a toss-up between IceWM and Fluxbox, and I think Fluxbox is going to be fast, because once we have it installed, yeah. then basically we can call this thing. Yeah, I would at least also suggest a, a browser. Or something. Oh. Now, I don't know if Chromium's a binary or not, but... I'm doing, I'm doing Firefox bin, dude. Yeah, we'll do that. When dealing with Gen 2, as long as I have, Firefox is king. Yeah. I will attest to that. And if I need... Right, thank you for, you know, for sticking around. Okay, go ahead. And if I need another browser, I will just install Flatpak using the Flatpak procedure that Gen2 provides, and I will just get the Flirt browser. Yeah. Which, for those who don't know what Florp is, Florp is a Firefox fork, and it's a really good one, too. I yeah. would recommend it. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna... Oh, that's good, Guru Digital. Let's just look. Hmm. Okay, let's check here. Oh, OBS is doing good! Still hanging yeah. around 11% CPU, 10... No, this is amazing. There, there has not been a single drop frame at all. Nice. Impressive. I think I know why, though. It's because I have a lot more RAM at my disposal. I mean, even, I mean, I got 16 gigs of RAM in this MacBook, and it's allowing OBS to actually function. I mean, when I had 8 gigs of RAM previously, I could do OBS okay, but not before the frame rate started to act up. Yeah. So... Now, I will say, folks, um, besides uh, putting Linux Mint Mate on my new SSD when I get it, since I have about 500 gigs, I may, maybe, if I choose to, may make it a dual boot. And if I decide to do that, folks, as much as I as much as I try to stay away from this certain operating system, I just can't help it. It's most likely going to end up, folks, being a Mac OS slash Linux Mint Mate dual boot. Yeah, I mean, folks, I have tried my best to myself away from all the you know given i have an ios you know slew of devices and i'm so used to the darn and i'm just you know it has a lot of things that i use strangely still have well well plus, well the thing is i mean mac os i mean it, it there are certain apps that you know mac os has that linux just doesn't have yet unfortunately oh and plus, it has the say it's best dev tools and mm -hmm. you know editing tools and all this and that that 
you and I both still rely on. Yeah, well, I mean, when when well, when I when I was last using Mac OS, I mean, um, I still you know used OBS Studio and that, but um, and there are still a lot of things that you know we can use that. Yeah. And and you know and, and and you know I use Safari from time to time, but only for certain web, but only for like for news web websites pages. and various web pages. When it comes yeah. to when it comes down to it, Safari is okay. It's just I would it's not my preferred browser. Now out there, there uh somebody has made a very good um browser that basically does a lot of things that Safari does. Yeah. It's called the Orion browser. I use it on my iPad. It is a wonderful wonderful proprietary browser i mean it's not free and open source from what i know but it's good plus the cool thing mm -hmm. about the orion browser is it can do chrome and firefox extensions oh wow that's the cool so kind of like you're saying Rick, it's kind of like a hybrid thing it's basically safari but hey, it has certain things in it that allows it to do a lot more. Okay. Now, granted, the Orion web browser is in beta, but it's getting uh, but it gets update from time to time. Eventually, it's going to exit out of beta at some point. But it, but the last time I um, was on it. I mean, it, I was using the latest version, and it was really good. Um, it's unfortunately not available for Linux, though. It is it is exclusive to Mac OS and iOS devices. That's the only type of hardware this browser will work on. Yeah, and that's like, you know, that's like uh, Drive Genius, which is what I need to use to run a portable copy of Mac OS. Yeah. Basically, uh, you know, it's like that. You know, it's like mm -hmm. basically you would have to, you know, you'd have to uh, basically, in, you know, install macOS if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, now I will say when when it when it comes to using macOS, I mean, Sonoma in the beginning it was okay on this Mac. It wasn't. Perfect, but it, it was it, it was fine. I would if I had to rate it, I would have to give it an average rating to be honest, because let's face it, I mean the newer the Mac OS is, dude, the less the performance that my book MacBook is gonna have on it. And I've already come to the conclusion that my favorite version of Mac OS personally for me is is a is a toss up between High Sierra and Catalina, and I still have my Catalina USB. Right now, I would recommend when you get your new new SSD is if you do reinstall it, I would recommend going with you know, I would give Venter a try, but if that doesn't end up, mm. go I Catalina. I mean, for, I mean, I mean, even though Catalina is like not being updated anymore, I mean, there are it's like secure. There, are, there are such. It still works, and shockingly enough, Ben, it still gets security patches somehow. Yeah, somehow I don't know. I don't how. know. I do not know. Now, say for example, though, if this MacBook, you know, was not a mid twenty twelve, say if it was a twenty eleven or below. Then in that case, my other option would have been Snow Leopard. Which, I mean, it's not as up to date, but you can still get a browser for it and Discord Lite. And I mean, it, you know, I mean, it, it, I mean, make it work. It, I mean, it wouldn't have all the bells and whistles, but, you know, for browsing and Discord, yeah. checking email, just the usual stuff, it would be fine. Right, and plus, I don't know if you can edit all product on it, but, you know, you could still install Light, you know, a somewhat up-to-date browser. That can well, I mean, I mean, I know Edo Pro wouldn't work on an old OS like that. I know for a fact it wouldn't do it. No. 
Um, but but given how old this MacBook is, and um, just letting you know, Ben, uh, the OS that um, it originally came with in the very beginning, what I, before I ever had it, Mac OS Mountain Lion. Yeah. That's how far the Mac OS version goes back with this well, book. Hey. Now, now I've also heard from somewhere too that Mavericks is not bad either. It's not. I mean, it, I mean, it's still slightly out of date, but you can get a a, a full version of Chromium on it, mm-hmm. and it'll work just fine. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't think it really matters this time around, you know, which Mac OS I choose. I mean, I I just got to remember that, yeah, that, mean, uh, that, 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 um, that with a mid-2012, Sonoma, it just wasn't a good fit for that. Right. Now, also, I will tell you, if you do say put, I don't know, Maverick, you can install... Chromium Legacy, and that'll be good enough. Oh, I'm I'm sure of it. Definitely sure of it. I mean, it's a Chromium fork. I mean, it, it, and plus, it's made for that specific version of Mac OS. Right, and you could also put it on Lion or Mountain Lion. Mm-hmm. You won't have DRM playback. It's sort of no. So so it basically it's it's all about you know finding the right balance. You know finding the OS that'll be good to your hardware, but at the same time finding the right Mac OS that'll give you you know at least at a minimum some up to date applications. Right, which for Mavericks and lower and heck. Mm-hmm. Even El Capitan, that's sort of getting long in the tooth. But, yeah, yeah, but you know, I, but I you will. Can still find alternatives, you know, like Discord mm-hmm. Lite that'll give you Discord access. Yeah. So. Now there are, you know, other operating system options as well for the dual boot. I mean, I could dual boot two different Linux distros if I really wanted to. I could, to. I could also experiment with Haiku. Haiku is still around. Yeah. It's, it's. Or what it, you could do is you could try Ghost BSD. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think about it this way. I mean, this this computer was meant for Unix-based operating systems. Now, and... that being said, Ricky, I don't know that your Wi-Fi card is on that, so that's the big problem. Because the last time I tried Ghost BSD, Broadcom was not detectable. Right now, that may have changed in their latest. Maybe. I mean, it, 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 it would be nice if they were to put the Broadcom driver in the ISO when you get into the live ISO. Yeah, because I know they have added the Intel modern drivers, but Broadcom with BSD has yeah. always been part of a cluster F. Uh, Warfunder just said, yep, I have a, a 2016 Mac, uh, MacBook Pro that's still on Monterey, but it's filling its years. Looking forward to dual booting soon. Okay, that's fine. Oh. Okay, let's see. OBS, how you doing? Oh, you're still doing good. We've been live for about, oh, let me check the YouTube live studio here. Okay, we've been alive for two two hours and thirty nine minutes. So, well, you know, this is part of the thing. It is. It really is. Yeah, this is part of the problem with the source based version of calculate. Is that even if we were on the graphical version, I'd logged in by some chance to mm-hmm. still be how long it would take. Exactly. And, you know, the night we build, we would have had less packages, but it wouldn't have been. I don't know. Well, I mean, with the I well, well, well the thing, well, the well, the thing is, with the nightly build, if we went for the scratch nightly build, we would have most likely had, um, you know, um, a much lower package base, but that, but we would have still had to update regardless. No, I know. So it's better we just stick with this version. Yeah. And yes, it's uh, it's 91 out of 486. It's going to speed up eventually, sooner or later. Right. Because, again, these are binaries. Have we gone with generic Gen 2? No. 
I mean, if it, if it was Gen 2 all over again, I mean, the, remember, the last time we did a Gen 2 live install, it took two live streams. Yeah. I was not prepared for it. Uh-uh. No. no. Okay, so right now it's going for the Linux headers. Okay. Headers, amongst other things. But no, I mean, when it comes to Mac OS, though, I mean, I mean, I don't want to go too newer, but at the same time, I don't want to go too older either. And the and with me weighing my options here, there's at least three versions of Mac OS that come to my mind right now, and that's either a High Sierra, which would allow me to do 32-bit support, and I would still get an update web browser, yeah. or you could use Mojave, which has 32-bit library support. Yeah, but the last time I tangoed with Mojave, my battery did not like it too much. Yeah, well, then you could probably go with High Sierra. Yeah, it's either it's or either something lower than that. One of the two. I mean, I'm I mean, from what I'm looking at, it's either High Sierra, Catalina, or Ventura. I would say probably Ventura because that's gonna have the most. Mm -hmm. The only problem, though, is in order for me to get Ventura on a stick, I would have to go to Catalina first, make the stick from there, then go into Ventura. Yeah, yeah, that's likely the easiest way to. Yeah. I mean, I know that there's like some free and open source software options out there that can make you a USB uh, for Mac OS and Linux, but I don't yeah. know much about them. Nor do I, and. Plus, if you wanted to use the restore image that I have, you would have to install Windows, and I know you don't want. I mean, I I mean, on my AMD gaming rig on the other side of the room, I have Windows Seven on there. It's just Windows Seven. I mean, it's hard still to find up to date software for it. Well, this well, if you do go with Ventura by default, mm -hmm. I can help you set up the R drive image that that I use. Now, I will say it does have a Clover Hackintosh partition on it, but that wouldn't matter because you would just have to boot the installer and yeah. leave it. But, you, but at the same time, you know, as I'm weighing my options yeah, here... you will have to... It's better you just do Catalina. It's better. I, I, You know what? Uh, I mean, I love Catalina. It's the, it's the one that has worked for me the best. That and yeah, High and Sierra. Plus, if you, need to, you can make a... You can make a um. You can make a restore mm -hmm. image through like Carbon Copy Cloner or uh, what the heck is it? Do uh, we can make it with a uh, time machine if need be. Well, I mean, well, the thing is, I mean, if I if I since I'm most likely going to end up on Catalina anyway, if I may if I make a time machine backup, I'll at least have a backup of my system. This way, it's okay, safe on it's there. Either a, either a it goes wrong or or b in general. What I can do is, if I wanted to, if I want to go back to Catalina, I just pop in the Catalina live live USB, go to the option where the time machine is, plug in plug in the stick of the time machine back up, boom, it'll put it back on there. So that's pretty much it right there. I think at the end of this, with with this. New SSD being 500 gigabytes, there, there, there should be no reason why I can't fit two OSs on the same yeah. drive. Exactly, and it looks like we're at 91 out of 40 package. Good thing. Oy, freaking updates, I tell you. I know. But we, but this is the scratch package uh, version, though. This is just what we, this is the hand it's that we're down. Package it's still emerge. It's just it's built from scratch. I mean, I mean, it's the scratch version. I calculate. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we're waiting on that. I'm gonna emerge pipe wire, and I tell you what, Ricky. While I'm emerging my packages, I'm just gonna say this. Uh. 
I'm not going to install my Wi-Fi driver just yet because uh, I don't want to, you know, install the Broadcom driver on my machine until I have a custom car. Sadly, you know, I hate to resort to that, but kernel binary or the it does not support Broadcom by default. Yeah, I know. So that's why I'm going to have to build the Asus. But no, if the day comes, though, when I have to give me a new MacBook Pro, I'm definitely going to want to aim for something at least newer than a mid-2012, even though the mid-2012s are... I would are... know at least a 2015 or 2016. That's my... 2015 or and 2016? Don't... Right. And I'm going to tell you right now, Ricky, don't. Do not go for a dual core this time. Oh, so I don't plan I to. I would go at least a quad. Quad, because quad core? I would go at least a quad, quad core, four core. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you, man, that dual core is okay for what you do, but running a VM like this, it's really gosh darn. And I think the dual core, was why we couldn't get the distro we were building last night to work. Eh, true, true. I mean, no offense, dude, but that was so daggone slow. We couldn't get our eyes well, so slow. Well, I don't uh, think. No. Well, I don't think it was just you know the dual core that gave us trouble. I think what mainly was giving us trouble was Arco Linux. Right. So I tell you what. I hate to suggest this, but Maybe after the show, we can give another try on Mint. I mean, I, I mean, here's the thing. I can basically, you know, pull, get a Mint ISO, and we can try it in a Mint VM and see what happens. Yeah, see what happens, yeah. It's fine. But we'll deal with that after the show. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Oh, why am I having this? But, yeah. Um, pipe wire turn response here. And then, um, yeah, I'm just adding packages as I see. Mm hmm Now, I'm going to look up the Asus kernel. Let's do Asus Linux Gen 2. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. Oh. 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 Wow, Ricky, this is oh, God help us all. I could have used System D with Asus Linux. Uh, I mean, not just open our C, really. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, help us. Oh. God. Okay. Well, I can change. <laughs> I'm not gonna reinstall. I can just switch to push the profile and recomp. Yeah, uh, that's what you can do. Yeah, I'm just gonna quickly do that to be safe. You know, because honestly, as much as I love System D, I'm not taking no chances. Okay, so I'm, I'm now. Not I'm just looking up some news bulletins. Um, yeah. Oh, what do we yeah. got here? Um, Linux. Oh, wow, Ricky, hold on. What? There's, oh, wow. There's overlays for the Gen 2 specific stuff on Asus laptops. Interesting. So they've got uh, an Asus ROG. I don't have an Asus ROG, you ass. Oh. Uh, Linux, Linux kernel 6.9 improves speak up in its in kernel speech synthesizer. Okay, that's nice. So 6.9 is on the horizon. Okay. Uh uh oh. Over. Uh, we have an issue here. Oh God, what? 
We have an update fail, ladies and gents. Oh, jeez. Uh, what does this daggum thing say here? Uh, problem occurred while executing the e-build file named lbzip2-2.5. Located in the slash var slash db slash pkg. Hold on, Ricky. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I gotta tell you something. I found an overlay that has Ventoy in it. As well as GitHub Desktop. Looks like I'm gonna have to. Alright. Well, let's. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, I had a feeling that, you know, in some ways, you know. Yeah, and also. It looks like the Asus control stuff mm -hmm. is... Huh. It looks like Asus CEO. Yeah. I know, War. Yeah. I know, Warfunder. It's a shame. Yeah. Calculate yeah. decided to take a crap. Yeah. It well... It says update. It said failed to emerge app arch lb zip two two dot five. Yeah, how much? I would. Uh, that doesn't seem right. No, I mean I did everything you told me to. Yeah. That's the problem. I mean, let me just go up a little bit. Uh, install virtual OpenCL, sysapp, sysvnet, uh, app alternatives, bzip, and then it goes all the way down until it just goes, uh-uh. Um, do you think you can, and on your screen, Ben, yeah. do you think you can read what this says here? Because I can't, I can't understand. Hey, hold, on, but hold on. Let me see. Um, hmm. what the heck does this say? Oh, gee. Okay, it's got an E, whatever. Um, oh my. Okay, we're going to have to check. Of all the time search could. Okay, let's. Uh, this one. Nightly build. Uh, okay, you want me to go pull down that lightning nightly oh, build yeah, then? I get that because this thing is so gosh darn. Alrighty. Alright. Apologies, we have to do a fourth install, folks, but I mean, we've tried everything. Son, to get this one dish on star. All right, go I here. Know you're good, so here's what so we're go here's what we we're gonna problem determination. Sometimes here's what we're gonna do. Go to nightly. There we go. Now go to the U.S. of A. Now yep. go here. Now I gotta go. Now I have to look for it. Or that gum installation. Eh. Okay, I'm gonna get CLS also. Uh, okay. S okay, there's CLS. Calculate Linux. Yeah. There it is. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, so. Well, four installs later. Hopefully, we get something. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I am sorry, Ricky. I thought that everything was going right. Yeah. I have just never seen Calculate act this pessimistic. No, no, no. I mean, this is gonna... <laughs> this has never happened to me in the history of Calculate in my life. No, so here's what we're going to do here. We are going to just take hey, out the guest. I'm gonna delete it. Actually, no, wait, I don't even have to. Okay, here's what yeah. we here's what we can do. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's open it back up here. Go to the virtual machine options. Yes. We select. Now where is it? Let's do it. 
Steam. Ah, here we go. Virtual disk, source path, no media. Well, you know, we're going to put a media in there once it's ready. Into why do you betray us? <laughs> It's just one of those things, Thunder. Gen 2. <laughs> this is why Gen 2 can be some pain in the rear. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, well, my. Okay, let me look at Thunar here. Let me not Thunar. Let me look at um, Forium here. Uh, it's almost done. Almost done. There we go. Now it's done. Okay. Okay. Browse local. Go to downloads. Now. <clears throat> okay. CLS 2403-2022. Yes, that's what I want. Why? Cross your fingers, Ben. That's all I can say. All right, now go here. Okay, so I'm... <laughs> I'm looking, Ricky, on the Chromium versions uh, for Gen 2, and oh my lord. Wait a minute, no, no, this is my actual install here. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's not what I wanted to do. We're going to do simple. Delete it. Just delete it. Yeah, just trash it. Trash it. Bye. Okay, go go here. Browse. Browse local. Yeah. Click the nightly image. Yeah. Type into the little thing there. Gen 2. Yeah. And you know what we're going to do? What? <laughs> oh, got an emer. Run. We're going to give this thing 6 gigs of RAM and 2 cores. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And then what we're going to do is 50 gigabytes of space. We're just gonna name this thing Gen Two. I don't care if it's Calum. I don't make care if it's calculated. It's still Gen Two at the end of it. End of the day, yeah. And then what we're gonna do? Click it. All right, let's just boot the dang thing up. We've wasted our time on. And all I'm gonna say, folks, this is the fine. This is the final attempt here. If it fails, then that's it. Yeah. Then we're going to call it a day and move. Yeah, if this thing fails, we're going to call it because it's 715. It's getting late. I mean, we've been at this, I don't know, four hours now, maybe. Uh, let me think. Well, roughly two hours. It's roughly. Let, let me let me look at this here. Hold on. Yeah. Two hours into the stream. Two hours and 58 minutes, almost three hours. Yeah, that's too long to spend on one installation. All right, here's what we're going to do. CF disk. Uh, DOS partition. Yeah. Yeah. We... Write it up. Yes. All right. Hmm. Okay. Make fs.ext4 mm -hmm. slash dev yeah. slash vda1. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Let's do pass w. Well, it's going to ask me for a password anyway. So, cl install. Take number three. Hopefully, third time's the charm. Okay. 
password. All right, so here's what the password for the root user is going to be. I'm not telling. <laughs> Okay, super secret password that is not one, two, three, four. Okay, yes. All right, Ben, here we go for the final time here. Yeah. Well, that, now, and well, I hope that now I'm not guaranteeing that this one worked at all. I just know that I, in my past experience, I've had better luck with the nightly build up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, be darn. You ain't gonna believe what I just found, Ben. Yeah. How to create a bootable Mac OS USB recovery USB from Linux. Are you shitting? You want, you want to see this? Let's have a look-see here on the screen. I'm genuinely curious about this. Okay, I got um Discord on my phone here. Let me just pop this link to you. I just came across this and was like, okay, you have my attention here. Yeah, this is genuinely interesting. Oh, I got my phone. All right. Dang, this is cool. Okay, preparing the system for reboot, thank the Lord. That was quick. Okay. Hmm. All right, here we go. Cross your fingers, War Thunder. All right, cross our fingers, boys. And since I gave it like six gigs of RAM, this should go a lot quicker. Much quicker. Okay, here's what I want to do. Uh, disable Discord from that. There we go. Okay, now we need to get into the root user. So, log in, root.
And now that we are in... Hold on, folks. I need to shut down this phone of mine. Come on. There we go. It's down. All right. CL update. Let's see how long this is going to take. I hope it's less than it was. I'm hoping too. Yeah. I hope you're right, War Thunder. I mean, ugh. Because okay. sadly, we can't emerge nothing until these updates emerge. Okay. Sinking Jintu repository. This thing was ten. This thing was this. This thing is two two days old. So. No, there shouldn't be that many this time. I mean, if it's a if it's a reasonable number, I will just be happy. Me too, because 400 plus updates, that was a bit much. I mean, they really need to push out a new stable version, I hate to say. Mm hmm. Huh. Sinking the cash. Mm -hmm. All right. Calculating dependencies. Mm hmm. Not very hopeful right now. Yikes. Hmm. This is going to be a little bit different. Holy crap, it's done! <laughs> Get it on, man. Let me just wait for the screen to to us. Hmm. Maybe there are no updates. I don't even... I gotta wait for it to catch up on my... Oh! I guess there are no updates! Yeah. Okay. okay, then in that case, time to emerge pseudo. Yep. I'm glad we went this route this time. Oh, Thank me. God. Me too. Me too. Again, Ricky, that. That. That stable image sucked. I'm sorry to say. I mean, the state. calculate developers, but please, for the love of God, make a new. So. Okay, and okay, so they now need to come out with like a they need to come out with like a calculate two dot mm -hmm. uh, twenty three dot one something. Uh huh. Yeah. Give them a oh. uh, holocron. Yeah. This time needs to really be okay. Okay, merging binaries. Good, 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 good. Yeah. There's only no. there's only fifteen packages with pseudo, so this ain't gonna be long. Right. Now, Ricky, um, I just am genuinely curious. We emerge chromium if it's a binary, because last time I thought and calculated it was. I have honestly no. Well, I, I mean, well, the fail, well. I still think, in, on a, in all honesty, we need to just go for Firefox back. We can do that. That's fine with me. Oh. Yeah, you're right, War Thunder. I mean.
Now the okay, so it's yeah, this looks a lot better. He's right. Yeah, I'm mean, all right. It's now um pulling in pseudo one dot nine dot fifteen. Okay, good, yeah. good, 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 good. And done. All right, I know what we're doing next. Okay, but before we do Okay, I need to test one thing. Is there a terminal based text editor already in here? Let's check nano. Neither. Okay, then we're going to do this the fast way. Pull in Vim. Pull yeah. in Vim. Yeah, I don't know it's how many pseudo it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, the thing is, I mean, pseudo is already in. We just need a terminal based text editor, and then we can basically put my user in the wheel group, and we'll be done. Okay, five packages for Vim. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. And it's done. Perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do is vim slash etsy slash pseudoers. All right, so let's go into insert mode. Let's go find it. How far do I got to go down to find this thing? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, escape insert mode. We're going to do bingo. All right. Okay. I'm, I am part of the wheel group now. So now we can yeah. exit. Okay. I'm going to go with the Linux. Oh, wow. Ricky, this is interesting. Uh, um, the default profile in Gentoo now is zero. Repeat that again. You broke up there for a I minute. Said, there's a new profile set in Gen 2 called 723.0. Oh. So it looks like Gen 2 got a new update set now. <laughs> so I'm going to pick 23.0 desk. Hmm. So that's 23. Oh, and wow, let's emerge dash AB. I don't know how many packages this profile update's gonna bring, but I'm, I'm genuinely, oh, okay, we have the long and the, uh, oh. oh. Oh, my user doesn't even exist. Okay, then we're gonna have to make my user then. Okay. Yeah. User, user add. M as mm. slash bin slash bash Ricky. Or you can have whatever groups you want on top of it. I'm not that worried about the groups right yet. No. A capital G. So we're just going to do this. Audio. Video. Oh, wheel. I think just, you know, audio, video, wheel. What do you think, Ben? That should be enough. With me. Okay. And... Ricky. Yeah. All right. Now, let's try this again. Oh, wait. I got to go back in the root because I got to give my user a password. Okay. And that is the kudos file. I already, I already added my son. I already um, unlocked the wheel group for me. All right. Now, let's see. Okay. Oh, 291 package rebuild. Mother of God, that's going to take a while. 
But hey, luckily, majority of them are binaries. Yay! Oh. What? All right, finally, I'm in my u I'm in my user. Okay. Awesome. Uh, okay, folks. Um. I gotta step away for just a minute to feed my um, animal children, so I will be right back as soon as possible, okay? All right, Ricky. Oh, jeepers. And folks, if it takes a little bit, it's because Ricky has so it's not even funny. Okay, let's clean off the plate, folks. I'm just cleaning off my lasagna plate. All right. Let's suck. All right. Be back in a minute, folks. Head in the back of the room. All right, folks, and we are back. Let's see. Oh, another interesting thing, folks, that I have to bring up. Uh, the YouTube channel Mac Break Weekly has reported that uh, one of their topics this 
past week was apparently that the next version of Mac OS is supposed to be um, supposed to be the last version of Mac OS to actually support Intel CPUs. So looks like the death of Hackintosh for us Intel in general is slowly upon us. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be surprised by that war sign. I mean, hey, <laughs> anything 10th gen or higher is like, no. But I will say this, though. Um, hold on. But I will say this. <laughs> I will say this, though. Um, the insanely mad community is working on getting Intel eleventh gen graphics working with Mac OS, which I have personally yet to test anything like that, but I'm gonna see if it works for me. Because I did download some ACPI patches that somebody made for Intel eleventh gen and as well as they sent over a config to try. So I'm going to see if I can get this thing to work. And if it does, by some chance, at some point, I will be making a video on how just so you guys know. But the one caveat with that is um, I'm debating not sharing, a, but now I need your opinion on this. Do you think I should share my yeah, file? And if I did, I'd probably tell them to change the SM BIOS and they can keep the same one if it's. But I mean, I don't know your thought on, you know. I mean, I want to help people out. It's just, I don't know if that's a good idea. I mean, I wouldn't be doing it to violate any terms or anything. I'm just, because I know a lot of people aren't open to like, Cloning EFIs or something, I just figured I'd ask your view on it. I mean, the only reason I would be doing it, again, is to help people are having the same amount of help trying to do it. I mean, I mean, that's not something I normally do, but in this case, you know, given it's not native hardware. I figured might as well give it a try to share it. So, mm -hmm. but that's just me. I mean, I'm personally not opposed to it. It's just I, I just don't want to give somebody a false, a false expectation that. You know, my laptop CFI would work on their machine because, uh, my even though as I do that, Hackintoshing is not a one size fits all boot thing. So, you know, I just yeah, 
I would be too, man. I mean, we've had so much work done to the open core bootloader. I mean, even if it doesn't work natively on Intel computers, there should be, I mean, I would think the, the open core devs are so daggone smart these days that they'll be able to find a way to get at least OCLP working on the new OS somehow. I mean, it may not be easy. It might be. I, I, I don't know. I get I don't know, man. I just, I'm a little, I mean, now, I will say this, though, the caveat, if you do happen to get OCLP or hardware like Intel with the new OS, <laughs> we may not see Hackintosh compatibility day one. I, I honestly doubt it. So, I wouldn't be hard-pressed to get the new OS working on any of my systems. I'm just, I don't see that happening. Realistically, man, that I think that's sort of a false expectation in this case. I mean, if we see it day one on a hack, huh. yeah, EFIs and PLIS, I don't see I mean, yeah, they're not interchangeable. What I'll do is I'll put it on GitHub, you know, for anyone who has a Asus tough, but you know, they will have to have this. I'll just make a stress in the video that people will have to have similar hardware to this, or if not the same, or else it's not likely to work. And also, um, if I do record it, it'll probably be that's just how I like to work. So. And I might actually do that tonight, late after Ricky's video, to be honest. But. And by the way, uh, I did see War Thunder on a, on, on a Google search that on the that there are ways to use the ASUS utilities. Uh, for Asus laptops with OpenRC on Gentoo. So I said, what the hey, I'm gonna switch my profile to that. So yeah. And sadly, I couldn't find a pre-made one of those pre-made EFI for this laptop. So I said, what the hey? I'm gonna make my own and say hell with it. Just to help not only myself, but others who don't know how to make an 11th gen e But I will say, uh, speaking of HP, I actually do have a ProBook 4530S sitting here and barely using it right now. It's because my dad bought me a, a battery for it and it's supposed to get here. So that's why I haven't done so, and the battery that it has now is basically dead. So yeah, yeah. yeah this is an ASUS Tough F15 EHB HEB something like that. And sadly, I could not find any information regarding it uh, specifically with Linux. So. I said, what the hey, I'm just going to grab a bunch of utilities to and try it that way. So, uh, let's search Asus Linux. Linux. Their GitLab. Huh. Asus Linux Patchwork. Asus DKMS. Ooh. This is okay. Holy, okay. So the Linux Asus CTL. They're they're pointing to the uh, kernel six point nine branch now. Okay. 
That's interesting. Now, yeah. oh, not bad. Well, my Pro Book, the seller, didn't include a hard drive and he didn't include batteries. So I put in a, a SanDisk, you know, or actually, no, it's a Western Digital 500 gigabyte uh, blue SSD, and then it, uh, and then it, worked fine however i do have to get that new battery and then it'll be basically good to go yeah that's pretty insane
Yeah, that's not good, War Thunder, that a bunch of kids would trash a computer like that. That is just, in my own opinion, tech abuse. But somehow, you know, I guess some kids just don't know better. Oh, that's, that's rough, my friend. I gotta, you know, that's just, you know, when you're trying to help less fortunate folks out, you know, and they make life insane like that, that to me is just, that's a shame. It really is. Um. Right. right. All men get out. No. Now, I should tell you, War Thunder, the reason I'm doing all these classes in school is so that I can get a, a tech job and support, whatever. And I was wondering, you know, if it's given I'm a guy who isn't used to dealing with usually non tech savvy people, do you think that's a good job to get into? I was just wondering your thought on that. Because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, uh, you know, non tech heavy people I struggle with, and also on the autism spectrum, and given all those, you know, different things, I'm not sure that I should get a tech job. Into the support route, at least. And I'm also very high up on the autism spectrum. Well, I will say this. I do have a sort of short fuse, and not with everybody, never at people, but 
there have been times where I've gotten frustrated. Sort of, you know, lose my cool a few times, and it does take me a little while to cool down from that, and I don't want to risk a job, so. Yeah. I get you. I mean, I do like helping people in that, but, you know, I, I'm i just sort of skeptical because, you know, given the whole short fuse thing, I'm a little wary, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I, for example, I've had a, wow, that's nuts. Well, I will say I do enjoy helping giving them a good feeling, but, you know, I just, I'm not as savvy with hardware as I am with software. I mean, I, I can build a computer, I can put it together, but, you know, the whole troubleshooting part, eh, not so sure. I mean... I mean, and plus the fact being in an office versus being at home, I don't Yeah, I. I'm kind of uh, okay, I'm right. back. Welcome back, Ricky. I was just making conversation with. Hey. With uh, War Thunder? Yeah, we were talking about my concerns getting a job. Uh. Yeah. I do a lot of tech in Linux at night or. Yeah. Now, I was also telling Warthog like, after your stream, uh -huh. I'm... Oh, wow. What is it, Ben? But, yeah, I was cons I was going to test out macOS uh, on a live stream on my Asus. I found <laughs> some files that will hopefully help me get graphics acceleration work. Now, oh. I will tell you, uh, and also, Ricky, I am not going to post my EFI on GitHub, but I'm going to make this caveat known to people. Right now. That EFI is generically, not generic, but it's pretty much tailored to Asus Tough F15 that I have. So if you don't have the same exact card that I do, please, for the love of God, don't download my EFI expecting it to work, because most likely... So, just want to point that out, guys. Anyway, so let's get on to emerging XOR. That sort of okay. No, no commas in there, Ricky. Just want to point that out. XOR drivers. Let's at least start with XOR. No, 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 no. It's only X clock, not XOR clock. Oh, X clock? Yeah, X clock and TWM. You don't need the X or no. Yeah. Backspace, all that. Yeah. Backspace sub to X work drivers and change to X clock. I would also recommend X terms because you won't have a terminal if then. Okay, so just X org, X clock, TWM. X core, yeah. And X term. 
because I know X term looks very generic, but again, it's the XOR term, so just just trust me on this. Now, uh, if I may say, I know we agreed on Fluxbox, but I want to, uh, I would recommend XFCE because I don't know scratch, but it didn't take that good. Scoring next time. Yeah, let's just go with generic. All right. Pull in that much, and then, you know, I would suggest XFC. You know me, I'm not Mr. Win Window Manager Configurator, and honestly, I think for the sake of the video, we should go. Yeah. Let's just try it. Because, I mean, if it's too many damn packages, we can just uh, XFC4 hyphen. Wait, what? XFC4 dash meta. Oh, let me back out of that. You're good. I was just warning you about that because sometimes it's a bit wonky. Now, say we do... I don't know how many pennies this is going to be, but... And also, Ricky, I tell you what. If, after the stream, we decide to, we can configure Xbox because I'm thinking more about it. I haven't tried Fluxbox in I don't know how many years or at all. And I was thinking, you know, after the stream, maybe we can sit around together. And if my Gen 2 happens to boot, we can try Fluxbox together. How's that? Yeah, um, yeah, it'll have to be, though, after a phone call, though. Yeah, that's fine. Just let me know when you're done with it. Oh, don't worry. I will. Yeah. So, oh, Bessie, here it comes. Give it just a minute. Oh boy, I'm kind of scared now. Oh, come on, XORD. Mm. 29 years. How many is it, Ricky? I, it's struggling to cash up. Um, well, number one, we hit a bit of a snag. It says, Emerge, there are no e builds to satisfy XORG. Then you want to put XORG server. Mm hmm. Just do that. I don't know why. It, I don't know what XORG is saying. That. Okay, now let's try this again. No. Okay. All right. Now I got to load up the ASUS. Then extract this time. Oh, see. Alrighty. Um. Xorg server. Yeah, this is just going to be a minimal Xorg right now. That's mainly. Oh, and Ricky, I disabled the bleeding edge thing in my make.conf because I don't want to sit through a hundred and or oh whoa okay uh what the okay uh total eight uh, packages yeah. eight new eight binaries okay. da, da, da. error looks like error I... circular dependencies okay um let's see let's just emerge pipe wire by itself let's see what that does so I'll do a pseudo emerge pipe Because I think it has to be installed by itself before we. Because that's what I that's what I did on my end. Login to it. So let's at least try that. Because that might be part of your problem. So emerge pipe wire. Enter. What? Yeah, error, right. error circular dependencies? What do you mean, error circular dependencies? Let me see what this says. I'm waiting for... Circular... What? Okay. Uh, well, as deprecated as Pulse Audio might be, that might be the route we have to go. 
Okay. FF let's try FFmpeg. FFmpeg. Yeah, because that might have to be. Because I'm looking at the use flags here. It's trying to pull some audio. Weird. I'm waiting for it to sync up to my. Perils of Jet 2 Base Distro that I can see. It errored again. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Hold, hold, uh, hold it. Hold it. I, hold it. Let me try something. Pseudo yeah. CL update. Let's check updates again. Yeah, because there's no reason in my eye that this is this. Yeah, because worst comes worst, we'll do a use mining pulse audio. Because, I mean, pulse audio seems to be causing a. Hmm. I mean, I have zero use flags set on my install into, and I'm not having any issues. Well, this is calculate we're talking about, though. Yeah, yeah, War Thunder. You see, this is why, in my opinion, actually. Ripped that. Yeah, something's off. Everything can't be a circle. <laughs> Funny war thunder. Funny. Okay, uh, system update finished. Okay, okay. Here's what we're gonna yeah. do. Um, Let's bring in pulse audio. Yeah, because pipe wire doesn't seem to be a good option, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dang it. Error again. Let's see what the issue is this time. What yeah. I'm thinking is, Ricky, hold on. What I'm thinking is we might have to do a use e equals quotes minus pipe wire because it, I don't know why it's trying to pull in both at the same time, but honestly, that's like the best idea I can suggest. Okay, so pseudo emerge. No, 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 no. Slow your roll. Do a pseudo capital use, capital letters. This is this is one way we can work around this. This is just temporary work. Just to like, you know, get the sound server installed and then we there. Okay, pseudo capital O S E. U S E. U S E, sorry. Oh, pseudo capital U's equals quotes. Okay. Minus pipe wire, close the quotes, and then try merging pulse on. Like that, Ben? Yeah. Uh, let me take a look at it. Uh, I gotta wait for it to catch up. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that looks right to me. Give it a shot. All right. Because, I mean, he's right. There's no reason that you know, everything's in a circle. It's, I mean, this is just something with modern Gentoo that seems to be an issue. 
Oh great, I gotta wait for GCC to compile and it's not a freaking binary. Okay, so. it's pulling in something. Finally. See, this is, see, circular dependencies normally can be solved minus flag temporarily just to get the package compiled. Oh boy. Okay, well, let's just start. Uh, okay. That's still I tell you what, Ricky, as much as I need to do it, do it. I'm going to mask in my package.mask. I'm going to add GCC because honestly, I don't want to have to look. No, gosh, no way. I'm just going to mask it and do it at world. I just don't have the patience to sit with. Oh, 75 packages. Binaries. Well, I matched GCC. It's. Thank the Lord, I only have 95 package updates and re rebuilds to sit through. Hallelujah. Because I got to tell you, I am not sitting on this live stream mm -hmm. waiting for GCC to compile. I got other shit to do. We both got other shit to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm not waiting for GCC to leave. No way. Mm -mm. That's like something you would do overnight. <laughs> if GCC was a binary, that'd be a different story. Right. And honestly, waiting for it to build from source right now, just heaven's no. I mean, I, I still got to get Steam and Wine and all these other things on my Gen 2. I'd rather wait for those than wait for, you know, GCC. Because mm -hmm. those are much smaller than anything. Now, the cool thing, though, about my Dell Optiplex uh, 960 is since it was made in 2009, it is able to run Windows XP, too. Yeah, and same with my Pro Book. It may be a 2011 machine, but XP would still work. And, it, and right now it is. And XP had support all the way up to 2014. Dang. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you can get it to run on most things, but Mar, mm -hmm. not worth it. Yeah, but thanks to um, LegacyUpdate.net, though, we can still get Windows updates in XP in 2024. Yes, and this thing can be set for Vista and Windows 7, you know. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to keep these older operating systems low. Mm. Well, now, that being said, for 2025, however, I don't know. We'll just have to see what comes around the band. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah. also, we're getting very close to the release of Ubuntu 24.04. Yes, and that's going to be... Now, from what I know, Kubuntu will not be adding Plasma 6 on this release, from what I know. Uh, but Kitty Neon has it. Yeah. Now, why they didn't merge it into Kubuntu? to this time I don't know uh, but they did say Gnome 46 will be part of Ubuntu 24.04 right and then hopefully Rouger and his team will get on a bandwagon with Unity soon yeah Unity is most likely going to get an update on the same day and I will be sure to take a good look at it for me mm -hmm. now the stock Ubuntu, uh, maybe. I stay um, away from that one. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean. Go either Ubuntu or Unity. 
I mean, Zabuntu, Unity, one or the other, Mate, maybe. Yeah. I'm probably going to go with our trusty XFC. Yeah, true. Zabuntu is good. Yeah. And Unity has never let us down, so that's pretty no, I mean, I mean, Unity. I mean, thanks to Rudra, Unity is once again getting updates and security patches. Right. So hence, I'll look at his build, and you know, heck, yeah, that's probably gonna be the one that if Gentoo falls flat in my face, my main Asus production machine. Yep. Because I mean. Here's the thing, even though Gen 2 is my love and my, you know, Linux baby, I want to say, that is, it just doesn't have the proper Optimus support I'm looking for. So, given that, and, you know, you bunch famous Prime Indicator, as well as, you know, Monte Optimus, which I can always fall back on, you know, that's probably what I'll end up using on my main production Asus, because, sadly... You know, it's just as much as I love Gen two, that's probably the best distro that I can run. Unfortunately, something okay. Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Well, now what? I do see Ricky that the ASUS kernel has been kernel branch has been updated to the six point nine branch. Interestingly, so they're in line with Linus's kernel. So that's an. Ladies and gentlemen, we have approached hour number four of this live stream. And sorry, folks, that it took us four daggum hours to get to a GUI, but, you know, sometimes when we try different things, we want something to work, that's just how stuff goes. So. And we're not saying that our next live should be this way, whether it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Con another live install or whatever mm -hmm. hopefully you know next time we do this live we won't run into an issue or go away mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah we will find out what happens next mm -hmm. you know this being gen 2 and source based with some binaries on top of we all know how much struggles And is why I really should make a Gen 2 installer with. Or even a text mode, I don't know. I mean, a text mode installer, I think, would be easiest. That's why I'm still considering that. But, you know, that may or may not happen, guys. I don't. I just. You know, but again, that probably will. Uh, anything outside of the. A hidden project that Ricky and I are working on right now, as well as our buddy Jonathan. We are not going to devolve too much into that. And also, I still have to think that. So, you know, I, I still have too, too much on my plate to even think about a Gen 2 ISO. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, we are pretty uh, much. Just about at Nearing 70 packages. Yeah. So after this, and... it will be XORG. Right. And then our trusty XFC, and we can go today. The good news, <laughs> though, about Calculate, though, is thank God we don't have to we don't have to mess with any configuration files or anything like that because here's That's the because here's because here's the thing calculate takes care of that for us yeah and that's what i'm very glad about and also ricky given everything so far has proven a binary mm -hmm. you know why don't we just see if chromium is one if not we can fall back I don't find yeah, you know why not. I mean, we're already this far into the hour rabbit hole mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't see a reason why not. Mm-hmm. No. Hmm. One. Um, 
world. So, this whole world. Hmm. Okay, let's try. Okay, I think what we're gonna do, folks, while we're basically waiting here, I'm going to find some Linux news articles to read off. Why not? We'll Those do... are always fun. Why not? We're going to do an impromptu Linux report here. I usually do at least one every one of my yeah, live streams. Okay, Very what well. all we got here? Uh, yeah, keep going down, keep going down. Uh... I think that you're on Bronix right now, I assume. That's, that's the site I always use. Okay. Right. I okay. found something. Okay. Rust written what? core utils version 0 .0 0.0.25 with improved GNU, uh, GNU compatibility. Out this weekend is a new version of UUtils Core Utils 0 0.0.25 as a Rust written drop in replacement to GNU Core Utils for common utilities found on Linux platforms and other operating systems. With the, the with, with the version 0 0.0.25 released, Rust Core Utils is passing an additional 15 GNU test suite cases since the prior release. Rust Core Utils continues working towards complete compatibility with GNU Core Utils, and thus a goal of passing all the tests. Currently, 437 tests are passing, 50 are being skipped, and 117 are failing. The version 0 0.0.25 release fixes various flags, adjusting various error messages to match the GNU style. Android CI improvements and a variety of other bug fixes and compatibility enhancements. More details on the UUtils Core Utils 0 0.0.25 Release can be found on their GitHub link. Yeah. So I'll go on oh to. Oh Lord! Now that LOBM. Oh gee. And Why, that and, and that and that is basically mine and Ben's hey, most hated nemesis LLVM. One of the very few packages that is not a binary. Well, not on Gen 2, at least. But everywhere around. I wish they would come to binary, but no. So, well, hopefully with my 6 cores and 12 threads and 16 gigs of RAM on, it won't take a millennia to install. Okay. Oh, what do we got here? Wine nine dot wine nine dot five released with more feature work. Twenty seven bug fixes. Yeah. Okay, what we got here? Wine nine dot wine nine dot five is out as the newest bi weekly development release for this free and open source software to enjoy Windows games and applications under Linux. Why 9.5 in, in release highlights include initial SLTG format type lib support in WIDL, exception handling on ARM64 EC, improvements to mini dump support, and various bug fixes. Of the bug fixes, are uh, there are 27 known fixes over the past two weeks, ranging from build issues with D2D1 code to Rocket League game crashes to Elder Scrolls Online and Tomb Raider free game issues, among various other game seeing fixes. The full list of nine of Wine 9.5 changes 
and different bug fixes can be found via winehq.org. Okay, good. More fixes to wine. That's good. That's good. Okay, let me see what other one other little news tidbits I can find on Pharonix. Oh, what do we got here? I think I just found something. Yes, I did. Okay, let me just get it up here. Where is it? Uh, where are you? I thought I had something, but I looked like I didn't. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay. LibreOffice enables multi-threaded 3D rendering. The, the, yeah. the latest LibreOffice drawing code has enabled support for making use of multi-threaded 3D rendering. The LibreOffice drawing layer has, a, a, a cook, has code now set to be enabled for making use of multi-threaded uh, multi-threaded rendering. The thread count is based on the number of CPU threads available and for whatever is being drawn that there is at least 10 pixels height per thread slash processor for distributing the work. With this commit to LibreOffice Git on Thursday, the multi-threaded rendering code is now enabled for use. It will be interesting to see what more multi-threaded work and performance optimizations come for the next release of this free and open source Office suite. LibreOffice 24.8 is due out in August. So, in several months, folks, we're going to have a new version of LibreOffice. How nice. Yeah, and we just got past we just got to Pulse Audio, which is 71. Okay. So now we should have a sound system. So. Mm hmm Oh, Ricky, I'm going to suggest we install Alsa because if we don't, our audio won't work, period. Also, Alsa Ben, uh, I mean, Alsa Utils. Uh, Lib, oh, let me list it out. Alsa Lib, Utils, and Plugins. Okay. So we'll get that once this is done. Now it's grant. Oh, it's emerged. It's finished Pulse Audio, but yeah, good, good point, War Thunder. Okay, so where is this? Uh, uh, Ricky, I've decided something. Oh, what is it, Ben? Uh, well, after your phone call, I will probably wait till then. To do my Hackintosh install thingy on YouTube because as much as I was not wanting to ask this of you, mm -hmm. would you do me the favor of being on it with me, maybe? Oh, of course I will. That's good, but I'm like I said, I'm gonna wait till you till I till phone. I get till I get done with my phone call. Yeah, because honestly. Given we're doing so well with this show, I would rather you be on mine versus me doing it on my own. Oh, I can, I, I, I can, we, I, I can be a, I, I can be a guest on your show, no problem. Right, that's that's just easier. Uh, Anyways, oh, uh oh, now what? Linux six point nine adds new Risk B vendor accelerated crypto routines. I don't like the sound of that, do you? Uh, this is what it says here. The RISC-V architecture updates were sent out today for the in-development Linux 6.9 kernel ahead of the version 6.9 release, release candidate 1 release this Sunday. RISC-V with the Linux 6.9 implements support for more vendor-accelerated crypto routines among the work is Risk V Vendor Accelerated A AES ECB CBC CTR XTS Cha Cha Twenty C Hash 
SHA-256, SHA-354. Okay, I don't even know. There's, It's all these algorithms. There's so many things in there, yes. Yeah, uh, anyway, I'll go down. The new kernel on RISC-V also now enables system hibernation support for portable kernel builds, fast GUP handling support for membarrier-based instruction cache synchronization acpi lp lpi and c and cppc support and other additions and else and it all it lists is all the stuff in the merge window the full list of risk v patches for linux 6.9 can be found in this git pull request oh so yeah, I I I know what Risk V is. It's a, it's an architecture that's used to make many devices that are similar to the Raspberry Pi. Goodness, let's try. And Raspberry Pis, for those who don't know, are ARM-based architecture. But Risk V, though, I know very little oh. about Risk V. Very little about it. In fact, I've never owned a Risk V device in my entire life. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, this is big. Fedora Linux 40 beta cleared for release next week. Hello. Another build of Fedora. Oh shit! And <laughs> after not making, I remember the wait a minute, Rick. I remember the last you did Fedora with me. Oh, that was not pleasant. No, that was a nightmare. Oh, but I have considered giving it another try. I mean, you should. I mean, it's not as hard as it used to be. Because I remember the last time we did it, we. Basically had me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's scary to think of. That. Oh, but mm -hmm. I might give it another one. Yeah. Okay, it is done. So pseudo emerge xorg. Not yet. Not, not not yet. Oh, let's get also first. Okay, so pseudo emerge. Let's do one at a time. We'll start with also lab. Yeah, also hyphen lib. Because I would say, you know, pull them in one at a time. Just... Ding, ding. Okay. All right, did it go through? It went through! Perfect! Okay, now yeah. we do also utils. And then the plugins. And then the plugins. Then we can take on Xorg server. Yeah, which that, I don't know how long it's going to be. But it shouldn't be too bad, given, you know, most of the packages we've faced mm -hmm. are, you know, binaries. That's the one benefit of, you know, working, you know, with Calculate is pretty much everything is binary, which makes it so much easier. This is... Let me just check our OBS here. Okay. Doing good. Doing very good. Okay. All right. We are done with that. Let's go plug in. Yeah, plug ins. That's what I said. Also, plug ins. Right. Do and. Boots. Two packages. Yeah. 
That's nothing. Mm -mm. That's nothing at all. Uh, I couldn't imagine having to uh, compile all of these. Installing the binaries is so much faster. I couldn't agree with you more, War, War Thunder. Agreeable. Oh, yeah, War Thunder. Uh, if you want to check out our stream, don't forget to subscribe to Ricky as well. Yeah. On my channel. Yeah. So. Okay, now let's take out Xorg server. We got our audio stuff now. Yeah. Okay, how big is this thing gonna be? What do you think? Good question. I mean, if Calculate is really nice to us, we would like nothing more. One package! Hello, baby! <laughs> this Xorg server. Oh, thank God. One package for Xorg server, but still, that's not the entire Xorg stack. No, 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 no. All right. Okay, we got the server. Now, okay, now we need to do TWM and X clock and X term. Yeah. Those three, now, those three in particular. Yeah. And I believe we got, I, I believe we got to do, um, X org, um, X in it, I believe as well. Uh, X orgs, uh, X org drivers and X. In it. Yeah, we got to do the drivers. To, yeah. Might as well get them. Well, not sure how much that's going to be, but might as well just go for it. Yeah, okay, we got seven packages, seven binaries. Let's give it a minute. Okay, and, L and meanwhile, I'm building on. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting a few fonts. Okay, and after this, mm -hmm. XFCE stuff. Well, well. After this, we gotta get the. We gotta pretty much do X org X X I N I T, and then we gotta do the drivers. Well, that's what we're building right now. I thought. No. Oh no 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 no! I am getting a little ahead of myself. Yeah, dude. you're getting ahead of yourself again. Sorry. Okay. I have a bad habit of doing that in Exorg drivers. Let's just do one at a time. I want to okay. see what the dr how much is the drivers going to be. Okay. Yeah. It works. Two packages. Perfect. Now, we should also maybe get the VM tools just in case. Do what? Let's see what we... The VMware tools, which I think is open hyphen VM hyphen tools. Um, uh, ben, this is not VMware. This is Vert Manager. We're using KB. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant Vert. I don't even know what graphics... We already have the graphics stuff. Okay. So, okay, right. so now we need XORG, XINIT, and let's pull in DBUS Broker. Which basically, it's a replacement for DBUS, since basically DBUS, you know, is so old. And it's very old. Oh! It's just called it's it's just called X I N I T. Okay, thank you for telling me. X in it, yeah. There we go. All right, now the we. Bus broke. You misspelled that. No, I I did not I did not misspell X I N I T. The bus broker. Well, that's what it was called in Arch. I don't know what it's called yeah. in here. D bus 
is still the, just playing. Oh, the oh, yeah. oh, the no, there, got the it. Bus, just playing the bus. Now oh, we should have it. Yeah. Oh, the bus broker requires. Thanks. I don't think it does. Use equals minus two system. packages. Perfect. Yeah, that's not all. Uh, it, for those people out there watching that want an easier Gen Two experience than doing it the old-fashioned way, doing it this way is so much better. So now we got Debus Broker. And now, let's get the elephant in the room done, Ben. Light DM. Yes. And a good. DM GTK greeter. Yeah. Now, if, I don't know if they have the light DM settings manager, but... Uh, uh, I, I've never used the settings manager. And I don't I, either. I know all my times using light DM, I never had to use it. Okay. Here. I always, what I always do is just either use that or I go. On. Okay. And if I remember correctly, I believe to enable Light DM, it's RC update Light DM default. Yeah. I think. Uh, RC update, add display hyphen manager, and then you have to... Display. Uh, oh. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Let us let me just wait for that, wait for the packages to show up. Or, you know, not show up, but like... Yeah. I just want to see if it... Uh... Okay, well, it looks like my Gen 2 Live USB... Ventoy has logged. I'm just, you know what? I'm just gonna boot off the SSD now. <sighs> uh, all yeah. right, we are done. All right, Light DM is installed. Okay, so first thing you'll want to do, Ricky, is RC update. No, not 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 yet. Oh no. Root. What do I need to do? You, uh, you need to run. Just a minute. You need to. No, you're doing it as normal user. One thing. Mm hmm. All right. I'm in my Gentoo install. Hell yay. Okay. So, w what what command do I need to take care of this? <laughs> okay, light DM, you need to sudo nano. Sudo nano. Let's see, conf.d. Conf.d. Display hyphen manager. Display hyphen manager. Right. Enter. Yes. Nano, oh, that's right, we're using Vim. <laughs> it's okay. There it is. Oh, it looks like it's already got it set up for us, Ben. Really? Okay, then just RC update that file. If my... Oh. Okay, so, yeah, if you look where my little pointer thing is, yeah, look right here. Light DM's already in display. <laughs> display manager equals light DM. Right there. So, we don't need to do anything. Hmm. Okay, so, RC, update, light DM, default. Uh, display manager. Ricky. Display manager. Okay, so display hyphen manager. Yeah. Display hyphen manager. Yeah. Uh, invalid command. 
RC update add. Add oh. I forgot. Yeah, I, I, forgot I, I, I forgot. I forgot the add part. It's okay. I've used OpenRC a very long time. Uh, oh, Remember, you have to do... Pseudo. Yes, yes. There it goes. Okay, and if I'm correct, we also need to do an... Um, I believe we de also need to do a RC service display manager start, I believe. I would think so, yeah. I think so. That's how I would suggest we do. RC service display hyphen manager start. Okay. Hey, Benny boy, look what we got here. Let it. Let me just get here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right. Uh. Oh, right. This is. Hmm. Oh boy, finally after four hours, it's loaded. Yeah, but the thing is though, we don't have an environment though. So Well, yeah, we're gonna have to exit out of this. So has okay, so how do I exit out of this thing? Uh uh just reboot. No no no. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm not typically... Uh, hold on. Oh. Let me just go into my user. Hey, Let... poor guy. How you doing, good sir? Uh, what happened? Yeah, I'm gonna have to reboot. I think. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yep. At worst case, we're gonna have to SSH. No. Uh, well, well. At worst case, but we. Get, but here's the thing. We just proved Ben Light DM is working. Yeah. So all we gotta do now is get XFCE. Yes, that's the main part. That's the yeah, main. Part. It took us four hours to. Get but it did. It's it's just one of those unfortunate things, you know. Where it, it, just, it took us that damn long to get a Philly desktop. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. I, um. I, yeah. Uh, we're. Yeah, Ben. We're gonna have to get into a TTY here. Okay. Well. How that, do I do a TTY in a VM? Oh, boy. Well, there should be a button in Vert Manager that allows... Uh... uh okay. Uh, this is how much it, lack of experience I have with this uh, with this Vert Manager. Um. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Control-Alt-F... Control-Alt-F... Ta-da! Oh, thank... The Lord for that. Okay, give me a hold up. All right, here we go. Come on. Hey, now I can actually read the screen. Okay, we're in. Let, okay, let me just look at this. Sudo um, emerge XFCE4 hyphen meta. Now, also, let's add a browser like Chromium just to see what the just to see what the hell happens. Yeah, just to see how many packages we have to. That's. Oops, I did not want to clear. Okay. Here oh. we go. Time to fall down the big ass rabbit hole. I mean, remember back in the day, folks, Chromium used to be a big package when it comes to Gen 2. Let's see how big I it is this time. It still is. Okay, plug dev, DNS, mask. Okay, so it is. Wait, it's... Let, let's see if it's a binary or if it's some huge package. I'm waiting for it to load. Um, it looks like, um... 
chromium is most likely a binary. Oh, thank the Lord for that. If Wait, let me let me double check. Come on. Shit. Two. 94. Oh Lord, it's a binary. Thank God. <laughs> Golly, that scared the living Jesus out of me. Well, and plus we got 94 packages to work with too. Well, mostly they're all binary, so this shouldn't be too Yeah. I'm gonna change this to fifty three. One. I'm just gonna leave it like that Wow, we're already at, we have four total jobs. That's not bad. I mean, especially for a dual core MacBook. I mean, my word. Well, this is what happens when you give this thing six gigs of RAM. Well, that's probably what you should do for. Yeah, from now on, when it comes to using vir virtual machines, six gigs of RAM in each of them. Yeah. yeah. And we're at 11 of 90. Dang, this is going hella quick. See, this is what I like about Calculate versus Gentoo. Okay, so my Ethan. CD. TNT. Yeah. Oh, wow, Ricky, this is nuts. Mm hmm. My root file system, not W. Okay, that's a bit dumb, but whatever. All right, I am building OpenRC on Gen 2, because I got to tell you, this system, DC, I don't. Yeah. All right, so it's 22 packages. And... She... Okay, now I'm going to log in as root again. And I did assign myself a uh, encryption passphrase that I know. And a password that is of decent length. Yeah. Now, I also installed the Terminus font because the default font size is. Oh. I'm sure it is. Yeah. And also, I'm working on my Galaxy search. And uh, folks are complaining that the graphics on it are just horrendous. So. Well, not horrendous, but it's too bright, so I'm getting rid of it. What? I don't want to send it. Okay. 
Okay, that will be in compiling 3,417 lines of code I have to. Golly. Sometimes I wish Gen 2 would make binary packages. Yeah, I know. It would save people a lot of god darn time. Well, I mean, they, I mean, Gen 2 is, it does have binaries, it's just, it's not enough still. Sad but true, but hey, you know, making binary packages does take a long time. And I know it's going to take them a long time to binary everything. But hopefully at one point, I'm not saying they will binary package everything. But no, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, calculate did it, and you know, that's good enough. I mean, in, in my honest opinion, Calculate Linux, to me, is essentially, you know, the Ubuntu of all, Debi of all Gen 2-based distros. Yes, it is. All right. So, let's, well, you know, it's EIX, roll me. Oh, I didn't even emerge EIX. Oh, jeez. Gen Lop, Gen Toolkit. Oh, and Ricky, I did add the KDE repo in here because at some point, probably on this install, I am going to try out Plasma 6 finalized. The last time I tried on Gen 2 was when KDE was. KD6 was still in testing. I want to see if Gen 2 has him. It's... Yeah. Huh. And most likely, um, with the next version of Slackware, whenever that comes out, that'll have KD6 in it as well. Yeah. What's coming out with KD6? Um... When the next version of Slackware comes out, it'll most likely have KDE 6 in it. Okay. We're almost done with this. Once these are done, Ben, we can finally get yeah. into XFC and all the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm just you know, I'm just so happy that Chromium is a binary. Me too, man, because I gotta tell you, I was not prepared to sit through hours of Chromium. No way. Mm-hmm. That would have been a daggum nightmare. Hey, we yep, mm. yep, it's official. Chromium is definitely a binary when it comes to calculate. Version 122.06261. Yeah. I'm waiting to see what version of binary of Chromium they're shipping. And you know what? As silly as it might sound, in my Gen 2, given Chromium is given Gen 2 and Calculator are the same, I might just grab their e-build of Chromium because, honestly, I'm not prepared to... Or I might just have to calculate overlay into my Gen 2 because, honestly, mm -hmm. I'm not prepared to do daggone hours of Chromium. I mean, no. if you, I mean, if you get their overlay, you'll get pretty much get access to their repo. Right, and that's why... You know, I'm not going to add everything under the sun from Calculate. I'm just going to add, you know, Chromium from all yeah. I want. Yeah, but I believe, if I remember correctly, in order to install an overlay, you need Layman, right? No, it's eSelect overlay these days. Layman is deprecated. Oh, Layman's so. dead? Yes. Sad but true when, it is. When did that thing get deprecated? Hmm. I don't know. Oh. Well, well, at least there's an easier way to get overlays now. Yeah. You select repository enable. That's all you need to run. Whether it's calculate or not. So, so basically, e-select repository enable 
insert overlay name insert um overlay name oh, here. Right here yeah that's a whole lot easier because I believe um in it was layman space dash a and I gotta tell you that was not sufficient. Yep. Mm -hmm. Rip layman, my friend. It's gone. Alright, so here delete the zip. This one it's not it. Um Yeah, rest in peace, layman. I mean, it was good. Yeah. It was good for its time, but e select repository enable is so much easier. All right, we are nearly done. Fourteen packages remaining. Well, actually, no, thirteen remaining. That's a good thing, in my opinion. Because all I gotta say, dude, is once this is done, we're gonna have XFCE, a browser. And, well, and that'll be sufficient. That'll be can... that. That'll be sufficient enough for us to get in to get past Light DM. Right, and then we can load up Chromium, load up a turn, get it work, and then that's the end of the stream for tonight. Mm-hmm. Now, all I gotta you know, all I gotta say is four hours was worth it. Yeah, because I mean that was almost like a full Dangum Gentoo installation almost. Uh, well, actually, this is like I think the first time that one of my live installs has gone this long. This is almost this is pretty much as long as an Edo Pro Duel night. Yeah, I'm seeing if the calculate overlay is here. Uh, Enable. Okay, so now I do an EIX date. All right, now let's. Oh wow, I have to do an email sync first. Otherwise, those repositories won't get detected. Yeah, I'm looking. Okay, XFC extras. Okay, it's installing the goodies. So wait, XFC goodies. Well, what I mean, they... well. Oh, thank God. Yeah, the power manager. The is it pulling in whisker? Uh, or Pulse Audio plugins being pulled. Yeah, in. the pl yeah. the Pulse Audio plugin. That's part of the goodies. So I'm guessing basically the whole XFC suite of things is combined together in this one. That's good. Okay. So okay. GVFS. Okay, so it's pulling in that. That's for Funar. Uh, net. Oh, good. Network managers are binary. RDB repos. All right. We're up to package number 93. We got one left. I'm going to... I have to look at the calculate repos. Let me look at... We're done. All righty. Good. All right. Time, time to reboot. Calculate Linux. Okay. Calculate Linux. I'm seeing what repos they have. Extras. Oh, the builder overlay got an update. Uh, I'm just going to add XFCE. Yeah. Type in my password. Here we go. 
Hopefully we see it. Do we, do we have it? Give it a minute. It's usually a bit slow to flow. Hey! I mean, it's a little disheveled. But it works. For the most part. For the most part. Okay, so let's get an application menu up in here. Okay, there we go. I don't get why we didn't have an application menu up in here. That made no sense. Branches. Absolutely no sense. Man. What's this? That's an applications menu. If I ever saw one, that's not the one I want. Okay. So, hmm. what a flip? Okay, that's Windows buttons. Remove that. I don't know why we got that there. Hmm. Move our workspaces over here. No, I didn't say do that. Move it over here. I like my workspaces right there. Thank you. Hmm. And put our desktop button on the outer edge over over oblivion there thank you then what we're going to do is where's the window list i need a window list is it yeah. window is it window menu no it's, it's the window buttons okay so do that okay so window buttons Yep. Okay, so that's add new buttons, but that doesn't give me a list, though. Hmm. You know what? That's fine. That is fine. Okay, so add new item. Okay, so that's not what I wanted. Okay. So. Okay, so there's... Okay, Funar. Okay, so that's... what we can do is... Move, you know what, let's just leave the window button right there. Okay, window button, move it over here. Okay, so, you know what, Ben, I'm not going to complain. Yeah, it looks like everything. Okay, okay, is this XFC terminal? Yes, it is. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. All right. Okay, we got a terminal. All right. Moment of truth, Ben. Major yeah. moment of truth. Let's see if Chromium will work. It should. <laughs> Internet. Hold on. Victory ish. Big time War Thunder. And hey, we got Wait, Chromium! Let me refresh the page. Oh, yay! We got our Chromium. Yay! All right. Well, I think we can call this uh, uh, a all a success. Okay. I mean, so what? You know, if the application menu doesn't look right, it doesn't really matter. Terminal works, web browser works. So what if we don't have a wallpaper? Where it, it's a functional system, that is what matters. I say, Benny boy, this is as good as time as ever. We're calling it. All right, cool. Well, uh, thanks everybody for checking out the stream today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for uh, my Mac. Yep. All right. His, and, his, uh, yeah. We will see you in a few hours then, folks. Yep. Uh, I got to take care of some phone call business, and then I will be a guest on his live stream in a couple hours. So, right. 
we're gonna call it right here folks i want to thank you all so much for watching so much for coming if you want to see more of these live streams just as much as we do then smash that like button ring a ding that notification bell and subscribe to my channel thank you the the next um the next event for this month will be Edo pro dual night plus open chat that will be march 30th 4 p.m and the, right. and that will be pretty much it it and the live installation for april um i don't remember what i said it was earlier but i will have a channel update at the beginning of april explaining what i want uh what events are going to be happening in april so you'll find out then what the confirmed live installation is going to be but anyway yeah. i'm up out of here he's up out of here have a good rest of your day all and we will see you very very soon but oh. until then this is Yu-Gi-Oh master 88 saying see you later have a Peace good out, people. have a good night everybody take care Take care, guys. <sighs> oh, my <laughs> heavens to...